for us, and here we are, pre-recorded, because we did this a few weeks ago, because we're not here at the moment, are we? We're away on that. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant. Hello there. And Carl Pilkington. With He's not actually with us, he, no. he's on the, he'll be in some of the, uh, best of clips that will be coming up shortly. Yeah, this is just us, isn't it? This is just this. us. We did this, when did we do this, Rick? A couple of weeks back. Hold on, what is it? What it's day the 27th is it? today. Yeah, well, I enjoyed well, Christmas, I loved Christmas. I loved Christmas. I had I a great Christmas. time. What did you get? Uh, oh, loads of presents. So and I'm glad they made it to number one. <laughs> I'm really glad. Stroke, he, she. Yeah, I'm really glad that the pop idols, Cliff Richard, Westlife, made it to number one. Bo Selector. Bo Selector. Yeah, just delete that as, uh, Yeah. Okay, well, we're gonna play some of the best of, some of the, the greatest moments of the last three weeks. <laughs> yeah. I ever heard on XFM 104.9. What about this drum and this one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, which one is it? <laughs> I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Over there, Carl Pilkington. The man who believes anything. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be a condition due to his little round head. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like, it might be a new condition that uh, we can call cranial sferity. <laughs> and it, cause it's, it presses on his lobes and the only sort of upshot of that is He's normal in every way, but he believes everything he reads <laughs> or yeah. sees on Anna Nova. Mm. Mm. All right. Talking of which, Rick, I don't really follow the news. No. It's mainly boring, isn't it? Wars and stuff. Yeah. But I don't know. Well, if... yeah. Well, it is a war. It's just it's all this nonsense before and after. When it's a war, it's you know it's in the middle of the war. You can watch it on telly. True. You get results. Do you know what I mean? Like. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like a test match or something. But it's all this rubbish before and after, it drags this, on. This recent war seemed, I thought, just generally it was better presented than the previous one. Because I remember the, well, golf, the first Gulf War, it was, it was often during the night and I went, really couldn't stay up. Yeah, either. because I think the American had rights to it, like the Tyson fight, so we, yeah. had, we had to get it at two in the morning. Exactly. Which is annoying. They had, you know, their prime time in that. Yeah. And yeah, a lot yeah. of it was in black and white as when it was the bombs went in. A lot of it was black and white when the bombs went in. So, uh, This no, time they seemed a lot more colourful yeah, 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 yeah. It's much better coverage. I think they should win awards. Yeah, well I'd like for it. So. Like Channel 4 one for cricket. Yeah, I mean, a few times as well, I was quite pleased to see you know, they actually had footage of the bombs exploding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. No, just, good, well done. Generally, you know. Good on you. Yeah. Well done. Um, good on you. Yeah, it costs you, a lot though, doesn't it? It isn't a cost. Wars thing. a lot more when you got something like you know uh, a Jimmy Carr game show, which probably costs about underground. Yeah, like half an hour of war costs millions. It's almost man. as expensive as like Terminator Three or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you know. But, but then you know you got you got a variety. Exactly. Sorry, Steve, you're talking, mate. <laughs> well, no, I just uh, just wanted I just wanted to make sure you're aware that the um, <laughs> the World Elephant Polo Championships have taken place. I did get it. You're I think that means not. Yeah, yeah, we won, didn't we? England won. Yeah. Well, I, my question is, where have they been practicing? I don't know. I, I, do you remember it, whatever at school, anyone ever saying to you, <laughs> are you interested in playing, uh, polo with it was, elephants? It was, do you reckon it was five blokes in pith helmets kept sneaking into a whip's nade? <laughs> Possibly. What are you doing, lads? We're practicing. Get, get down. Yeah. Get off them elephants. Yeah. I genuinely, I don't, I didn't even know we had a team. I elephant, can't believe it. No, but I, it's like Johnny Wilkinson and the rugby lads, they're gonna get MBEs, all sorts. The elephant boys, the elephant polo boys, nothing. They're gonna get nothing. I haven't seen the sun. You know, to be, like to be fair, it's not like horse polo where I think, I don't think you, there's a stick long enough. I think the elephants kick it, don't they? I think you might be right. I think they're not allowed to use their tusks. They'd burst it, won't they? Mm, I think they go, yeah. oh! <laughs> Start again. Raheem! Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean the elephants kick it? All right, I've, got, I've opened a can of worms here. Uh, you know, um, um, normal polo on a horse, they have like, um, yeah, they whack them up. Yeah, they whack them, right? But I think it's, obviously they're too high up. I think, I, I, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they just train the elephant to kick it. So, so like, why are people something about, why not just let them have a kick about without... <laughs> And why does horse racing have to have a jockey? Well, they just let the horses go on you. Know, okay, lads, on your no cheating. <laughs> on your marks, get set, go. You know, get back here, get back here. Brilliant okay. play record, Ryan Adams. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is absolutely fantastic. His version of Wonder Wall. If you've not Beautiful. heard it yet, you'll be loving it. You'll be loving this. This is the best of show on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Stephen Merchant. Yes. I hope you're enjoying the best of. There's a fella who, um, was in a coma for 20 years. Mm. Just, they, they kept, like, taking him to, through, like, the normal day. They took him to Alton Towers and stuff. <laughs> Doesn't know any, about anything about it. Just kept going through the motions. Um, don't know if they kept charging him. Um, <laughs> kept putting him through all that. He eventually came out of it. 
20 years. And went, stop taking me to Orton Towers, it's shit. <laughs> I just thought, imagine and how much post making, he had. Eh? How much post? <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you God. read about that guy in the paper, Carl? He, um, <clears throat> sorry, on the internet. Uh, he, he, in about, I think it was about 1984, 85, he had a terrible car accident. But this went, must be it. He this went into a coma. This must be what he's talking about. Well, they didn't take him to Alton Of course Tower. they didn't. But you've got to try and decipher the truth from the conjecture, from the thing that he, he I mean, don't forget, Carl says, uh, realises that he's had a dream. He talks to Zan and goes, that was good, wasn't it, last night we were in the plane? She goes, no, that's a dream. He goes, oh yeah, where's my car flex? <laughs> you've got to, you know I mean, I can now decipher what he's actually seen, what he's read. Well, go on, what, what, what did you- Well, I'm assuming it's the same guy. <laughs> it is the same guy. In, uh, it was a guy in, uh, some small American town yeah. and he'd had a car crash and he'd gone into a coma and his, uh, wife had, uh, left him. She'd gone on with her life because he'd been in a coma since then. And he had just woken up recently. Marriage wasn't working. <laughs> Marriage wasn't working. Uh, he just wasn't paying enough attention. <laughs> uh, he actually had, she was pregnant at the time, and so now his daughter, his, now, his daughter is basically the same age as he was when he went into the coma. And, um, oh. he's just started coming around, he's just started making jokes. He says, they said, uh, how do you feel? He said horny, which I thought was quite witty for a man who'd been in a coma for however uh, many years. Um, but anyway, yeah, so he's slowly trying to rebuild, uh, what life he can- he can. That's what do you make of that though? Cause he, the thing is that he's missed- imagine what he's missed, Carl. Imagine the music that he's missed, the Live TV Aid. programs- Miss Live news. Aid. <laughs> Live Aid. He's missed, he missed uh, the Phil Spice Collins Mills. playing in two consonants in one day. <laughs> um, <laughs> Which, oh, frankly, I'd be devastated if I just missed that. Miss Bross. Yeah. Yeah, so he doesn't, so he put on ripped jeans and they go, passe. They just have to send him a series of those, uh, <laughs> I Love 1986 exactly. programs with Kate Thornton filling him in on what he's Exactly. Missed. Peter Kay reminding him of space hoppers. Yeah, he remembers Richard those. Talking rubbish. Yeah, so, um, so extraordinary though, isn't it, Carl? To think. Mm. No, obviously. So not. I, had he aged much? Because he hadn't had any problems or anything. No worries. Well, he, that, probably he, wouldn't, a... he probably wouldn't have physiologically. He probably wouldn't have the wear and tear of a forty-three-year-old oh. man because he wouldn't have sun. He wouldn't have had sort of nicotine, beer. Um, and they were just feeding that to him. <laughs> yeah, anyway, still. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so You'd feel groggy though, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, you might feel a bit groggy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, he's not. He's not fully back to normal. I mean, there's no, some it's... kind of residual brain damage. Yeah, but nevertheless, he can form sentences. He's got very. He's got no real memory, so he can't remember a lot of things. It was just when I saw. Carl, have you been in an accident? <laughs> <laughs> The Brilliant Blur, Out of Time on XFM 104.9. One of my favourite singles of the year, and that's another thing, we'll be playing our favourite singles of the year, as well as our favourite clips of our own show. Rick, I imagine if people have got a bit of Christmas money, they're wondering what they can spend it on. Office DVD? Well, other than that, these guys have got some ideas. What, adverts? Uh -huh. Brilliant. <laughs> Placebo. Bitter End on XFM 104.9. This is pre-recorded. We recorded this a couple of weeks ago, before Christmas. I hope you had a great Christmas. Uh, if you didn't, it's not our fault, really, is it? Nothing to do with us. Wouldn't have thought we'd have. We had a whirl of a time because we got plenty of cash now, <laughs> thanks to a lot of you who probably bought the uh, Office DVD. Yeah, probably got and that. If you haven't yet, and you've maybe got vouchers or money, still available. Still there in the shops. Still available. You can still make it the best-selling DVD of all time. Please, please, please do. Yeah. Please do. I tell you what, you wanna. Here, there, before you make your mind up. I'll tell you what, if you like this next clip, go and buy the Office DVD, I think you will. It's a brilliant clip. It's the one where we talk about, uh, well, it, it's self explanatory. Yeah. <laughs> What's the best job you've ever had still, Carl? Talk about your faces. It is still paper the paper round. Is it still <laughs> the paper round? Yeah. That's <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> no, it was good though. If you look at it, like, you know, what I liked about it, you're your own boss. No, you're not. You're not your own boss. <laughs> no, the Brilliant news, news agents agent. agent. is your boss. All right. But then when, once you get out and you've got your papers and that, you, you sort of, you're on your do own. Do you want as long as you deliver stuff. the papers exactly to the places he said you are in the time he said? Yeah. It's and I do. freedom, isn't it? <laughs> Any jobs you wouldn't do? Uh. I've just thought of one that you wouldn't do. Go on. With your sort of mild homophobia. Well, I'm not. Proctologist. What's that? Basically sticking your finger at other people's arses. Right, well, I wouldn't do that, no. Why have you got to do that? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, why have you got to do well, that? Why does anyone need that doing? Does they got to look if they've got an arse ache or something? 
Which trainee doctor makes that their speciality? Do you know what I mean? That must be, um, right, we got our place for apologies, and it's, it's you, Meadows. You, you yeah. came last. Oh, seriously, what? I'm not the arse doctor, am I? Yeah. You came last. Oh, I'm a bum, a bum GP. I can't yeah, believe it. Yeah, yeah. You got to, oh, I can't believe this. Yeah. I'll tell you a job I don't like. What? I wouldn't want to be doing. The, the woman, there's a little woman who sits in the little <laughs> snack stall <laughs> on Finchley Road. Station. Yeah. And I don't know how to describe it, really. She is surrounded by snacks. She can't move for snacks. It's Does like- it look like American it, Beauty, but with, with, uh, different- It's not dissimilar to that. Yeah. It's a little hut on the station. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, if you go to the seaside, you can put your head through one of those cardboard cutouts and it looks like you're a big fat person or whatever and you yeah. can have your photo taken. It's like an equivalent of that, but it's just snacks everywhere. She's got bananas up to her chin. <laughs> She's got chocolate coming down to her eyes, crisps either side of her. She can't move. She can't do 360 degrees. She's like packed in there. I don't think, I don't know how she gets in there. I think morning. they put her in her first and they put, okay, pour in the bananas. Yeah. They go, then they go, go pour in the nuts. She has and they two just... hours of makeup before yeah, they open exactly, it. Yeah. Dressing her in there. Because but... I'll ask for something from the fridge and she cannot turn her head to see. She, she has just... to go by feel alone just to feel the fridge <laughs> and get stuff out and pass it. And often I'll say, that's not what I wanted, but she can't. You gotta let her off. It's oh, extraordinary. Dear. But there's no music playing. Does she have to nothing? sell her way out of it? <laughs> if, 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 if it's a slow day, she's stuck yeah. there until the next day. Yeah, it's like a world breaking attempt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, what job wouldn't you want to do? Well, any job. You're a lazy. F you're yeah. joking, aren't you? Uh, I've done loads of stuff. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy now doing what I'm doing. Yeah. You but, look uh, happy. I think you I sound happy. Yeah, I mean, uh, calm down. You on drugs? I'm all right. I Are you on E? Before, England have won and that. I'm what? happy for them. Yeah, go on. I'm happy for them. I'm happy in that. Yeah. Well, isn't it happy for them? We are England. Happy yeah. for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we didn't play. I did very little <laughs> towards it. No. It was mainly Johnny Wilkinson. Yeah, I the barely contributed. Switching on the TV was about <laughs> as much as I did. <laughs> exactly. And shouting, "Come on!" Yeah. <laughs> Talking about jobs and that, though, I was reading the other day about. um like, you know, rubbish jobs that people have had in the stuff. I haven't got time when I work, man. <laughs> just, I just get on with it. I'm yeah. not squiddly diddly. <laughs> Fingers in pies, different jobs. Go on. Uh, do you know Ivan the Terrible? Ivan. He, uh... It's, yeah, his <laughs> Russian... Yeah, that was the Welsh fella. It was, yeah. it was bloody awful, <laughs> but not as bad as his Russian cousin. Ivan, yeah. go on. He, uh, he had a fella doing some work for him, right? Yeah. This fella built his house. Yeah. Uh... After it was done, right, yeah. uh, the terrible fellow was like, uh, <laughs> fella Ivan. He, he yeah. was going, oh, it's brilliant, you've, you've done a good job there. Yeah. I don't want you to build another one like that. Took his eyes out. Just what? stopped him making an house like that. Another one. Blimey. That's why bad, isn't it? Why didn't you take away his trowel? Then he could have <laughs> seen yeah. that he couldn't have built a house without, without a trowel. You can't build a house without a trowel. Yeah. I, we, I, think, suppose yeah. he, I, I suppose he probably later thought that, once he'd been nicknamed Ivan the Terrible. Yeah, yeah. He thought, why? Why? Because you gouged people's eyes out. Yeah, but I didn't want to build another house. I know, but take his trowel away. What would I have been then? Oh, <laughs> Ivan the Crafty, at most. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, uh, Ivan the Jealous, you know, Ivan yeah. the Spoiled Brat, but... Yeah. Ivan, uh, Ivan the Terrible eyes, is it, That is bloody terrible. I'm surprised you're not called Ivan the... Do you know what I yeah. mean? You're gonna get on in history like with Vlad the Impaler. Yeah. He's mainly remembered for impaling people. Yeah. He did a lot of other stuff. He did a load of great charity work he did. The impaling is the thing that's really yeah. gone down in history. <laughs> when were you reading about Ivan the Terrible? No, it's just Or little Ivan the Terrible <laughs> is the, the the thing you remembered from this uh, informative article? No, it was, it was just little bits like that. Talking about him, there was a thing about, uh, someone who worked for that, that fella who painted the ceiling. Sistine in, Chapel? Yeah. Th okay. There was a thing, the, the, a woman who worked for him in his house and, um... I love how you assimilate information when it's just bordering on the academic or just, uh, or just the interesting and true. It's wonderful. Ivor the Terrible gouged someone's eyes out because built him an house. The f that fella who painted that ceiling <laughs> had a woman work for him. Imagine if you wrote that down in an essay. <laughs> Imagine if you wrote that in a school essay. Well, you'd probably end up with not, not getting a grade or... Yeah, or, or thinking you've turned yeah. up to more than you had. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, the Go woman on. who lived with... Yeah, the woman who lived in the shoe. Go on. Yeah, yeah. there was this woman who, uh, who lived with him and, uh, <laughs> she used to, like, you know, go out and do all this shopping and that. Yeah. Uh, but because she couldn't read or write, he used to have to draw everything that he wanted. Why couldn't he just tell her? I don't know. No, Wait, but that, no, 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 wait. That's an excellent point. Could she talk? Yeah, but if it's a big list and that, loads of different coloured paints But why couldn't stuff. she draw, draw on a piece of paper? Why did he have to do it? Because he's a better drawer, isn't he? <laughs> 
That's the point. That's it. That is, we were just looking for the logic of the story. You found it. You done it. Play a record. <laughs> this is the best of show on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant. Yes. I hope you're enjoying the best of. I'm amazed that these are the highlights and that we've strung it out this long, Rick. But the good thing about this is, we're not here, we recorded this a couple of weeks ago, just the links, right? This has taken us about ten minutes for the whole show. We get paid the same. Why don't we do this every week? <laughs> That's a great idea. High five. Right. Listen to this clip. It's brilliant. <laughs> um, I think that my new TV is too big, Rick. I said that. I know. I don't know what I was thinking. But I, I, I can't believe it. He talks about this buying it. He's got a bit of cash now, of course. And uh, what is it? Forty-two inches. Mm. Forty-two inch plasma screen. What did it cost you? Three grand or something? I don't tell. That's 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 wow. Huge. It's three ridiculous. Half, three, and grand. <laughs> three and a half grand. Big spender. Uh, of course, it's too big. Well, I can't get far enough back in my room, in my living room, for it. You know, you know, it, for, you're meant to be, I think, four times the screen size away from it. Really? To get out from the air. So that's four times 42 inches you're meant to be sitting away from it, which is impossible. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I'll have to just get friendly with the neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watch it through a hat. Yeah. If, if that's the case, though, aren't you better off just getting a portable? What? I don't understand that rule. Well, what, to get... what are you saying? Well, you're meant to be four times the screen size away from the TV. But that's then what's the, the point in having a big telly if you've got to keep moving further back? Get a portable <laughs> and sit and right sit next to it. it. <laughs> do see your point. Why do people go to the cinema then? Did you see films that are out yet? <laughs> Fair enough, he's got you there. Dom. I tell you this though, <laughs> I had it delivered and um, I, are you supposed to tip delivery men? Of course you I are. I don't know. You well, well, if I, I've never had anything delivered before. I've never well, spent no, that not, much if money. It, not if it's a courier with an envelope, but if it's a bloke who struggled up the stairs, I two, the door two open fat blokes with a fridge, then give him a fiver for a drink. But, but the problem was, I didn't realise, and I was thinking to myself, I wonder if I've got to tip him. And the guy was leaving, and my mobile phone went off in my pocket. Yeah. And I reached in to get it. He put his hand out, thinking it was a tip. I went, oh, it's just my phone. Oh. And I felt terrible after he left. I didn't know. I, I, what was I going to do? Run down the street and offer him a fiver? No. No, of course not. No. I'm not made no. money. I just spent it all <laughs> on TV. <laughs> yeah, I've got no money, mate. No. I just spent it all on yeah. this. I had to clean out my jar, exactly. everything, the drawers. Uh, yeah, it takes me, um, yeah, bottles back. What, what, you, I, what, the problem was it took me forever to wire it in. I thought I'm not gonna pay for someone to wire it up, you know. So I took me about three hours to wire it in and it was huge and I got it switched on and the first program that was on when I got it wired in was Bargain Hunt. I'll tell you this, David Dickinson's tan almost took me eyeballs out. <laughs> <laughs> it was incredible. It was just, oh, it was like, it was like x-rays. It was so the close. You know, a huge plasma screen with this orange thing yeah. coming out of the and he keeps, and he keeps turning to the camera, <laughs> course, doesn't he? Just grim. to get you. Yeah, he turns away, you get a bit close, they go, what's he doing? He just turns <laughs> exactly, around, yeah. takes the cornea off. What do you think, Bargain Hunters, Bargain Hunters, Bargain Hunters? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, well, that's why I'd buy a plasma screen to watch, um, to watch Bargain, Bargain Hunt. Hunt. I mean, it's ludicrous, this is the problem, is because you, yeah, what do you I watch? I mean, have you watched anything that's been worth having? The I mean, only thing I've watched really worth watching. 24? Well, on, yeah, 24 works great. But right. also films, obviously, that's the main mm. reason I bought it, because films just look amazing on the- Yeah, DVD on, on yeah. the plasma yeah, screen. So if you're into films and that, yeah. it's just that I only, you know, I've just got the, got the five channels and flicking about, and I'm, I'm not impressed. <laughs> I mean, I can understand why more people listen to radio and stuff. Yeah. Cause- Well, not this one, but go on. Well, <laughs> I, when was it? When was, uh, the last time I sort of sat down and had time, cos I'm always busy doing stuff on that. Sure. Um... Moaning takes up about three hours a day. Mm. When did... When did Wimbledon, uh, finish? A couple of weeks ago. Right. Found myself sat there, right, I'm not having a go. I know we stopped Cheeky Freak of the Week and all that, right? So Christ. I'm not, I'm not gonna be having a go. Christ, I'm sat there. I'm scared. No, I'm not having a go, you've always got to remember that. Go I'm on, just, just, just get on with it, get on with it, I'll apologise after. I'm just saying, watching Wimbledon, it wasn't, uh, you know, one of the major games, it was, uh... Right. Little fellas in a in a wheelchair having a having a game. Little fellas in a wheelchair. Right. But for me, I mean, you know, great. They're doing a the sport and everything. But don't put it on the telly. <laughs> <laughs> what was up with it? It wasn't there wasn't like a rally going on. <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know what I mean? Do you know oh, normally Christ. like with the with the with your, well, not to Enman, but with some of the <laughs> With, with some of the other players and that, they're playing for ages, aren't they? And it's like, yeah. oh, who's gonna win this and that? Yeah. None of that. It was just like, hit it, net. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christ! Oh, God! I don't know what to do! 
<laughs> what, 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 what? And people, people would like sat there watching it as well when they've got mm. other games going on in there. That's what I couldn't understand. If you've paid your money oh, to get God. in, yeah. I mean, like I say, good on them if they. Do you know what I mean? But it would have been. I and they know, all I, start first in the marathon. I just thought it would have, you know, give them a game of swing ball or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? No, yeah, 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 I understand. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. There's never anything XFM on. XFM in the community. <laughs> Let's play a tune with Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Ricky Dot Gervais. XFM. Don't put my name <laughs> to this last link. <laughs> Don't put my name to this last link. Ricky Dot Gervais, XFM.co.uk. Oh. Magic, Virgin, if you're listening, we are available probably sooner than we thought. <laughs> That was Radiohead and there, there. Uh, we're not here, here. All right. <laughs> Pre-recorded. Coming up is uh, one of Carl's little film things where he puts himself into a film. It's his favourite film. It's Kez. Enjoy it. I love the fact that in um, pole position, in, in positions one and two of his favourite films of all time, it's The Elephant Man and Kez. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. Go on. All right. Am I leaving the mics open a bit when this is going out? Yeah, or yeah what? let's have a listen. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. Don't talk then, right? Just put that hot dog down, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the bit in Kez where <laughs> it's the teacher and, and, and he gets up and he has to Glover. talk. Glover. What's his name? Is it Brian Glover? No, no. No. No, no it's What's the other the, teacher. The other one. Anyway. Right. Go on. All right. So, here we go. Things that had actually happened. I've oh, yeah. another one. What about you, Casper? Casper! All right. All right? All right. You haven't been listening to a word I've said, have you? Yeah, I heard, uh, heard some of it. Yeah, you... Some of it? Just... Stand up! Oh. Stand up! Yeah, stand up. Oh. Always somebody, isn't there, eh? <coughs> right, now you're going to tell us a story about yourself. What sort of story? I want you to think of an incident that happened to you sometime in the past that is true and that you think will interest the rest of the class. All right? All right. Uh... Uh, what about, uh, I work, I work on a, um, on a radio show at the weekend. Well, are you gonna tell us about it? I'll just, um, just do, it's two hours, and it's, it's with Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant, and, uh, just sort of play music and, you know, tell stories and stuff. What kind of stories? Well, whatever. Like, last week it was science. We are talking about, uh, this lad who was growing... Uh, a, a knob on his arm, so <laughs> it's weird. It's tricky, sir, because like with Ricky, he he gets bored quick and he won't listen to the stories, and he'll start squeezing the head. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I'm not interested in what he does. But that isn't that isn't normal, is it, sir? That I mean, it sure is a bit gay. Is he? <laughs> <laughs> is he? Just messes about, though. Do you know what I mean? I try and like come up with good stuff. Like monkey news and like quizzes and stuff, but then he'll just, you know, Ricky will just mess about. I mean, on on Saturday he did it again. He he, he squoze me head. How did you spell that? Squoes. S Q. Oh, right. well, I'm going to show it off the new word to me. Uh, squoes is S Q U O Z E. Uh, All right, now tell us what the it is. It's when um, it's when he he gets me head. And he puts one hand on the back of it, right? Yeah. And he puts the other hand on the front of it, and he just sort of swivels it. Swivel, right down the front. Oh, swivel's not a... It's spelled S-W-I-D... Like that. How many times a day? How many times a day does, does he swivels it? It depends what time he, you know, what time he gets in. If he gets in about half past twelve, he could get a good three in. But, but I think, you know, I don't, I don't really want to talk about... Well, you don't, don't you? Hold well on, Billy. Bring out the report. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, the effort. Yeah. Uh, wow. That that's uh, that's the best thing you've ever done, Carl. <laughs> Sent in the club on XFM 104.9. <laughs> we're playing our favourite singles of the year, yep. and uh, we're looking back over some of our, our favourite clips of the year. <laughs> I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Not done a lot. Maybe you should earn your money as you get to Mondays off for this two hours of nonsense. What are you on about? I've done loads of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, right. Same old, same old. 
Yeah. Let's have something new. Something Come fresh. On. Well, I've been looking around, right, on the- on the internet for stuff. Yeah. On the internet? Yeah. Your Bible? Mm -hmm. Where you get all your information about the world and the universe <laughs> and morality from? And you know, like, how I always say to you, I don't really read that much of it, I just read- read the headline. Perfect. Right? Yeah. Anna Nova, I sort of nicked that idea. To grab you. <laughs> right. to, to, <laughs> nicked what idea? Well, to sort of get to the meat. Straight away at the top. Do you know what I mean? The, the headline to the story and everything. What? Right. These are stories- But the headlines already existed. That was why you thought nah, that was a good idea. not like this though. All right. <laughs> headline. Well, these are all headlines, right? Vibrating shoes could stop elderly falling. <laughs> 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 Do you know oh, what I mean? Oh, God. You don't Vibrating need- Vibrating shoes could stop elderly falling. <laughs> yeah, that's the story. <laughs> you don't need to read on. That's what I'm saying. Well, right? could you read on anyway? <laughs> I can't be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> you know Read on I mean? anyway. Well, Read... you have a look at that in a bit, right? Oh, so oh, okay. so what this is frustrating right. radio if you're sitting at home. No, well, you, you, it's not on. They've <laughs> turned it off. If yeah. you want to know more, you know where to go. That's what I'm saying. That's what they should do in the news. <laughs> Get the news done in, Bong. in a minute. There's a good story about Iraq. <laughs> right. Bong. Right. 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 Look it up. Give look it up on the internet. Hand and over. Give us another bong. Bong. Family sick of living on Butthole Road. Oh, 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 brilliant. Bong. Man wears same shoes for 60 years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bong. This isn't that good. Uh, some fella pulls a train with his teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in lighter news. I know that that. Triple title, this one isn't very good. And, oh. uh, the last one, man fails to break clothes pegs on face record. <laughs> She's always good. Well, yeah. that's, that's the one I did read on about. <laughs> I love that out of all those, that's the one he read on about. Go on then. Just, um... Why is that news? He fails to make a record. Mm. So did I today. <laughs> I, know, yeah. I failed the long jump record today. <laughs> yeah. Didn't even take part. No! I was rubbish. But what are the rules on, on world records and that? I don't, I don't know if there are rules. There are certain things you can't... I mean, it's it's the Guinness Book of Records, isn't it? Really, that's the arbiter, isn't it? Yeah, but is there anything if you said you wanted to do it, would they say, "Well, you can't do that"? Yeah, they've they've stopped some gluttony records. Obviously, things that are in danger. It's anything that's illegal. Yeah, anything that's immoral. Yeah, like that that American serial killer that just got discovered. Yeah, and killed forty seven women. I don't think he can make that into the Guinness Book of Records. No, because people would be trying to beat it, won't they? <laughs> but there was some some other story about a fellow eating watches and that. That can't be good for you. So why don't they say, look, don't do that, do something else. He wanted to stay regular. <laughs> do you know what, what do you mean? mean? I just- I just wondered what if- What do you mean he was eating watches? He just said he was eating watches. He, he got- he about three in about a minute. How did he- how did he time it? <laughs> do you know what I mean, though? And then, the other thing is, the one- the one that I was reading the world record with the fellow who's pulling a train with mm. his teeth. Mm. Does- does that make any difference? That he's done it with his teeth. What do you mean? Well, what difference does it make? Well, isn't it? It's quite hard to pull a train with your teeth, I imagine. Well, it's pretty hard to pull a train. <laughs> All I'm saying is, is it is it because he couldn't beat the fella who's pulling it with his hands? Well, that's so the, the, this is my point. There's the, I think there was uh, one bloke with a record for the backwards running backwards hundred meters was sort of like eleven and a half seconds. And I was thinking, <laughs> turn around, you'd probably you'd probably have a really good go at that. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's sort of like doing a marathon with a milk bottle on your head. <laughs> Take the milk bottle off and see how fast you can go, you <laughs> twat. But you can just tweak it. Like, the fella who has done the pegs on the face, right? Yeah. Um, his name's Gary Stretch Turner, right? <laughs> right. So, he's sort of cheating already if he's- if he's got a stretchy head, right? <laughs> but, but- You are, right, <laughs> you are one of the most stupid humans I have ever met. Well, get me in the book. Yeah? <laughs> Right? Well, listen. <laughs> so, Gary, Gary Stretch Turner, right? His record is 153 pegs. Yeah. He did it again, and he only got 150 on. <laughs> so, he hasn't broke his own record. Right. But what I'm saying is, if he tweaked it a bit more, would that make a new record? What? Well, if, if he said, I've got 150 pegs on, 
but at the same time as eating a burger. <laughs> <laughs> I see yeah. what you mean, yeah. yeah. He'd be the, or, or he'd be the world it. record breaker for pegs and eating burgers at the same time. Yeah, just change it a bit. If you know <laughs> that you're not gonna make it, just do something else. I'm assuming the rules are set at the beginning, Carl. That's yeah. it. That's where they say, right, you're just gonna do the pegs thing. You're not gonna introduce burgers halfway through, are you? Definitely not. <laughs> and okay. then they have a go. I was on one leg, not interested. How many pegs? 150. Can I just ask very briefly, I was quite interested by the family had to move because <laughs> they lived on Butthole Road. <laughs> yeah, I quite like that now, one. I, I don't know if I've told you before, Rick, where I used to live. I'm not going to tell you the name of the street that I used to live on, because- not on air, because my parents still live there and I don't want right. to, you know. But I'm going to write it for you now. This is the name, the genuine name of the street I used to live on. Let's just imagine when you're at school. Yeah. And oh. like in class, for instance in French, you've got to say, they got, you've got to answer where you live. Yeah. J'habite, wherever. Yeah. That's the name, this is actually the name of the street we lived on. No, it's not. I swear to God. <laughs> that is- I absolute right. I could phone my father now and he could confirm that for well, you. No, I swear because he doesn't want to- To God. And I'll tell you that- what, But listen, do you know what worries me? It's the apostrophe S. I know. Because that's blatant. Yes. Amazing, isn't it? That is incredible. Imagine how embarrassing so that if was. I look that up in the Bristol- You will find that in the Bristol A to Z. I swear that to God. That is really- Why have you never told me that before? I can't believe I haven't. That's I'm incredible. still embarrassed now. Do you know if whenever I have to phone up, if I have to give that address, I always spell it instantly. Really? Like somehow that will hide it. That will disguise the name. But I can't get over that. Anyway, if you perhaps live in Tits Avenue, yeah, <laughs> you know, or um, Wankling Drive, Wankling <laughs> Drive, just get in touch. Let yeah. us know. We're not really interested. <laughs> this is the best of show on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Stephen Merchant. Yes. I hope you're enjoying the best of. I know what you're thinking. If this is the best, my Christ, what was the rest like? Well, we'll be back in a week's time so you can, uh, judge it for yourself live. But anyway, in the meantime, this is one of the best clips <laughs> I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, I'm laughing just thinking about what it might be. <laughs> he said these, you know, oh God, it's like a child or a cat when it's confused. He went, Steve reckons in ancient Greece, right, it was better to shag a bloke than a woman. And I went, well, yeah, I mean, that's about the, the male being, uh, um, sort of a, a first class citizen, yeah. much better, wasn't it, an aspiration yeah, the, the to sleep with a beautiful Carl, man yeah. than a beautiful woman. Women were lower class citizens, yeah. so therefore men were seen as, uh, uh, as higher class. So to have sexual relations with a man was, there was no shame in that. No. In fact, it was looked upon And as I said, well, was, you know, ancient Rome, I said, um, you know, Nero, he used to, he sit in his big jacuzzi <laughs> and he used to get, you know, pretty boy men to go into the water and just nibble at his testicles while he, he was having a watch. He didn't do that. He, he did. did. Uh, yeah. And he's not a gay fella. No, well, no. I mean, you know, I don't know about Nero, but I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a case of a big delineation between what was heterosexual and what was gay. It was just, you know, whatever you... So what, what did this fella do then? This one who's having his... Well, he was, he was pretty much top, top boy, Nero, for yeah. a while. He was in charge. And, uh... You know, and they, you did what you did what you're told. If uh, Caesar or, but why know. were people going round there? Why didn't they go? Oh. No, they weren't dropping in. <laughs> <laughs> they, it wasn't like the doors opening. I was going to see what Nero's doing. You'd have probably been like a delivery boy or a stable boy or something, you know. And you'd have popped round there and you'd have gone there at Nero as uh, as the tablets of stone you wanted. And you'd go, Pilkington, why are you are here? Pop on. I don't know why he's French. <laughs> what, what is that? I don't know why he's French. Just pop under the water and nibble at my testicles, and you'd have done it. Because he was Nero. I wouldn't. He would have. Well, there's no, no way I would have done. Yeah, well, you would what have. What have I done? I've dropped a pizza off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, you, you put under Nero's face pizza. <laughs> I've dropped right. a pizza. Right, I'd, I'd say I've done my job. Right. Yeah. That's not the sort of tip I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, he'd have said, get the little baldy chap to nibble at my testicles, and you'd run under the water. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't done it. No, well, well, you don't have me had done it. Right. No, I wouldn't done well, it. So. Uh, 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 can I just say this, Steve? Not only would you be nibbling at his testicles, you'd have been going mad, you'd have been noshing him, just for extra, you'd have had a, you'd have been doing everything he wanted. You'd have been going, he'd have gone, I didn't ask you to do that. You'd have been going mm. mental, you'd, they'd have been chewing, slurping, right. smacking, poking, he'd have chopped, you'd have, you'd have gnawed his right. packet <laughs> off. you think you're eating Walker's <laughs> crisps. <laughs> there'd be bubbles, there'd be blood, <laughs> oh, it'd be <laughs> horrible. <laughs> That was Bowie and Waterloo Sunset. Love that. Love the original. Love Bowie. Bowie was my gig of the year. 
these are my singles of the year, these are our clips of the year. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant. Uh, We're just picking some lovely little bits and pieces. Do you remember when we talked about this? <laughs> That's the sort of thing I think we need now, right? We've covered a lot of stuff. What, education? What, teaching, yeah. Well, okay, um, what, what do you want to know? Uh, don't know. Have you I got just, something? Can you educate us on anything? I've been reading bits So and could bobs. we bring back just for one, one, for one night only, educating Ricky? Oh, I'm excited. Yeah? Uh, Do you think it warrants that? I don't, I don't know enough about it. Do you know what I mean? About what? It sounds perfect. Play the jingle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, educating Ricky! He's getting smarter. <laughs> Couple of things happened in the week that I read about. Okay. Keeping up on what's going on in that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, one was about, about that Galileo fella. Okay. Uh. Was it about 1636? <laughs> 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 was it? Was it? I think it might have been earlier. Bad. Go on. Did some stuff with light and that? If he, yeah, uh... it did lots of physical experiments, yeah. Is that it then, Carl, is it? He did, he did some stuff of... with light and that. Well, what did he do with light? What was that? Well, he did, he, well, he, uh, I think he invented the first... Telescope? Uh, yeah, telescope. So, I, I, I think it's a particular lens out of that, um, and, uh, he did experiments where he dropped two, um, famously, two different, uh, weighted, uh, balls from pizza, pizza, and, uh, they hit the ground at the same time, showing that it doesn't matter, the weight doesn't matter, the air resistance does and stuff like that. I think he probably explained it a bit better than that. Yeah, but I'm talking to Carl. Sure. Well, d d did they need to know He's stuff- He's just thinking about pizza. <laughs> yeah. Did they need to know stuff like that back then? What do you mean, did they need to know stuff like that? It's just, it's just- there weren't people going around going, I've got to drop these two things off the Leaving Tower of Pizza. I, I just know. don't know which one's going to land first. Yeah, I need to know. What do you need to Bring know Bring me that? Galileo. <laughs> yeah. It's for a bet. <laughs> yeah. No, but if I was knocking about then, I'd be like, stop messing with that. We need a telly. Or, <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> I yeah. bet he thinks the Flintstones is real. I know. Like, that'd be brilliant. That's what I'd do if I was a caveman. I'd make a telly out of rock. <laughs> yeah. And a pelican and, and a cement mixer. And a car along the road with. Ex yeah, exactly. <laughs> We need a car. Yeah. Well, we haven't really got the internal combustion engine. Can you stick your feet through the bottom? <laughs> yeah, just get me a car for Christ's sake. Anyway, so I learned that, and yeah. then um, what? He <laughs> learned his name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Other people I learned the name of this week. Oh, if a chimp could watch telly, go on, Carl, go on. And there was also a fella in the week who said uh, that women shouldn't be wearing trousers. Why? Because they don't look good in them. What do you think? What do you think about that? It's rubbish. Yeah. These are the only things <laughs> that have caught your eye over the last couple of weeks. This is the entire news. Galileo did something with light. A French fella said women shouldn't wear trousers. See, that, that to me wouldn't pass as education. <laughs> it's not education. <laughs> I don't know where you could ever use that. I don't know when that would ever be applicable to I life. Ju I just like reading stuff that sort of reminds me of, do you know what I mean? If I read it and it gets me thinking, I think that's, that's a good little piece. But, right. I mean, uh, but surely me, uh, sh can't you just sort of like sit near something that vibrates to keep your brain going? Or shake your head every now and again? I mean, what, what does this do? You mean it makes you start using your brain? But what aspect of the, a Frenchman said women shouldn't wear trousers got your mind working? What questions were you because asking? Because I thought that's, that? that's a bit, that's a bit daft, isn't it? Right? Yeah. Okay, it ends thinking. there with me. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing else, there's nowhere else for me to go on that. He closes Your mind's the gate. Still worrying. <laughs> yeah, go on, what do you think? Let's go through this. Oh, I wish we could download his I thoughts. Know, I Just know. watch it. Yeah. Uh, uh, wouldn't it be great, like a DVD? A, like a added, imagine that, uh, extra footage on the office DVD. Yeah, Carl's oh, brain. That would be with amazing. A oh, what with I mean a commentary. Is, go on. Women wearing, wearing trousers and that, right? <laughs> on the estate that I grew up in. Yeah. On, on, right? Uh, there's a woman about four houses down, <laughs> right, right, rough. Now, she used to wear leggings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, they're a bad idea. <laughs> they are a terrible idea. I agree with you there, Carl. If you're a lady of what the colour? normal were, persuasion- Were they, were they, they were, pink? No, they were sort of black, but with all bits on them. Oh, right. Do you know what I mean? What, yeah. toast and just bits. horse droppings. Yeah, go on, yeah. And she used to, um, she's quite a big woman. Sure. Pauline Quirk, I think, yeah. described well, the, her as. Look like a light bulb. It is those kind of women leggings. that are attracted to leggings. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. They are drawn to them like a moth. <laughs> 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 yeah. She yeah. used to wear them, and, and, and that's what I remember when I read this piece. And <laughs> uh, She used to work on one of those sex line things. Right. right? She used to do that. But... <laughs> what, was she an engineer? <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> 
the weird thing, the weird thing with her was, um, she had big eyelids. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Go on. That, that were too big. And this, this is what I was thinking. What, right? what, do you mean she, what do you mean she had big eyelids? How big do eyelids have to be for you to go, they're big eyelids? <laughs> what was she shoplifting with them? Would she come out of Dixon's with, like, radio stored in them? What do you mean yeah. she had no, big a, eyelids? It was another one of them popular things around our way. Do you know, like... What do you mean popular things? I, I they think didn't go, go, they go, oh, I'll tell you what, they're all the rage. Can I get some big <laughs> eyelids, please? No, 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 it was just, like, one of them things that people suffered with. Just big eyelids. They could hardly open their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean? That, that's one of the popular things around where I grew up. People had big eyelids, they could hardly open their eyes. What does that mean? What sort of freak town were you born in? You had webbed feet people with big heads, you got women with big eyelids. What does big eyelids mean? Are you confusing her with the horse? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did she have hooves? Look, what? Just anyway, so there's this big eyelided woman with the legs. And that's what I'm saying to you though, that's... When I read that story with people with trousers, yeah. I went from that yeah. to a that. woman who used to have big eyelids. <laughs> still, I still know the point. But then, but then, and also the other bloke who had the eyelid problem was a was a mate of mine. Right. Yeah. His, his dad had it. Um, <laughs> same problem, massive, massive eyelids. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Um, um, I used to say to my mum, oh, I'm going round to, you know, Dave's house. Yeah. And, uh, or Drew say, Pete, well, as you call <laughs> that's all right, but make sure his dad doesn't take you out in the car. Because he could hardly... <laughs> <laughs> he could hardly see. He had to have his head... <laughs> he had to tilt his head back to keep his eyes open. Make sure! Didn't he have a couple of matches with him all, at all times? <laughs> oh. What a load of gobbledygook. Uh, well, yeah. is... but this began as educating Ricky. I know, it's so like he was people thinking... with eyelids! But it's like you're supposed to make that leap as well. Yeah. If I mentioned the, the trousers, Ricky will probably be thinking about people with big eyelids. <laughs> and women yeah. wearing leggings. Play a record, Carl. <laughs> This is the best off show on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant. Yes. I hope you're enjoying the best of. Like I said to you though, mm. the reason I did this yeah. was to get that kitchen. Right? Now. Brilliant. As we speak now, right? Builder's in the flat. He's been annoying me. <laughs> of course <laughs> he has. Of course he has. What's he been doing? Uh, well, when he, when he turned up on, uh, on Monday, right? Yeah. Wanders in. And the first thing he says to me is, uh, he said, the pub across the road, is it any good? <laughs> I said, well, it doesn't matter, does it? You're working on the kitchen. Think of saying that to a builder. Probably making conversation. Probably meant, do they do a, a, a toasted sandwich? Because I've got a half hour lunch break. Not an hour, like Carl Bilkington. Mm, mm. So, uh, I'll probably then get a nice, you know, cheese and tomato sandwich. So you genuinely what you said to him? Yeah. The first thing yeah. You yeah. Said so, to Suzanne had a go at me saying, why have you said that? He hasn't even started on it yet. I cannot believe that. that. You're unbelievable, Carl. And you say it's us that are rude, crass, I wasn't being rude. I just was, I just was letting him know. Do you know what I mean? I know what He knows what he was there for. He had it down on his little docket. Do the <laughs> kitchen this week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he didn't come down and go, what the f- what did I come out for? Was it to go to the pub for a week? Why am I mm. wearing these overalls? Yeah. Who's the little bald man twat <laughs> insulting me? Let me just check. Let me call the head office. I wasn't having a go though. I mean, they should have finished it yesterday. And they're yeah. there now. Right? Yeah. On their own. And what annoyed me is they turned up late today. Hold on, Carl, I've just realised something. They're probably listening to the radio. This, I assume, tuned to XFM, isn't it? In your kitchen. Yeah, but they don't know it's me, do they? Do you know what I mean? No. They'd go, he's got a whiny mank voice as well. So's the bloke who owns this place. And the bloke who owns this place, when I said, what's that pub like across the road, said, well, you won't be bothering that. He's working on oh, this. No, he, he won't be able to put two and two together, will he? You've suddenly, the pen is dropped, doesn't it? You've suddenly realised, look at his face! Yeah. He's suddenly realised they might know it's him! And they could be listening, and they're gonna clean you out, mate. Oh, if you are the builder working in, uh, where is it? I won't say the address, but it's... Central London, isn't yeah. it? Go yeah. Go mental. Have whatever you want. Opposite Seriously. that, opposite that pub that yeah. you like, that you're... That It'll you're... probably be in there now, so he won't be listening. Oh, insulting. You know insulting I mean? a British insult. workman. He should so have been just in go mental. He should have been in at, at eight this morning, just which annoyed me anyway. Mental. Why, I don't, I really don't understand why they've got to start so early, right? Yeah. But he said he'll be there for eight, turn up at half nine, yeah. right? Wanders in. And what annoys me is, he could have left all this downstairs. He had a paper under his arm, yeah. one of those crossword books, yeah. and a pot noodle. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not being funny, but most of them take a, quite a bit of time. A crossword book, he's not happy with just the one that's in the paper. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening, if you are the builder that's listening now, doing Carl's flat, what about pissing in the laundry basket? 
was uh, Jane's Addiction. This is the best of show on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merch. Yes. This was a clip show. We recorded this a couple of weeks ago. Um, I hope you had a, uh, a Merry Christmas. Um, it's not over yet because tonight at 9.50 is the second part of the Office Christmas specials. It's brilliant. Watch it and we'll be back next week live on Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant. Bye. Have a great new year. <laughs> Probably you're thinking, Rick, um, isn't it time that we do the, our usual roundup of what's been happening in the news? Yeah. Which we on. always do every week. Yeah. Uh, we always do something. Which is, I mean, basically, if you're listening and you're a new listener, say you work at a newspaper, we always try to be informative, just try and put stuff out there that just educates people, informs people. What are you people. thinking? Well, I said monkey news is coming up, but what have yeah. you got? No, I was just looking on the net there and just found a couple of quite important news stories, probably worth mentioning. Um, policeman caught photographing. <laughs> 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 I don't know why it makes me laugh. It's just the phrasing, I suppose. It's, it's a headline. Policeman caught photographing up woman's skirt. <laughs> no, um, he wasn't up there taking a picture of Big Ben. <laughs> no, he wasn't going, can I just sit up here? I'm just going to take a picture of that, <laughs> that seagull over there. No. He was facing the camera up a woman's skirt. <laughs> he was indeed. Right. Uh, a policeman in Japan is facing disciplinary measures after he was caught photographing up a woman's skirt <laughs> with a hidden camera while on duty. Uh, the 42-year-old sergeant, who's not been named, used a digital camera to secretly snap the shots when the woman was reporting a stolen bicycle. So he was actually... He was actually doing his proper job. He'd obviously thought to himself, I'll bring him a digital camera today. On the off chance a beautiful woman comes in to report a crime or robbery, I'll have it ready, I'll have it positioned, you know, yeah. in such a way. But this is interesting, this is how he got caught, okay? The woman became suspicious after she saw a flash go off. Brilliant. <laughs> I mean, this Not a secret at all. <laughs> Sorry, did I just see your shoe? Your shoe just seemed to just spring into life there. It was light. There was light. Yeah, I think I've had some, I, someone set fire to some magnesium that was <laughs> no, on the end of it. No, it no, won't no, happen only, again. Well, it's only you and I in here and your shoe was just yeah. suddenly lit. I Why are you standing like that? Why is your shoe just sort of like between my feet? There's no reason. There's, There's no, no reason. reason. Just, just, did, where, what did the bike look like? Flash? <laughs> so, <laughs> are you taking pictures of my family? No, 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 no. And no, I'm not. And you should be wearing knickers anyway. Well, how do you know that? What? How did you know on that? How did I know what? The, I'm not wearing any... I didn't know you. I don't know what you've got up there. Well... I don't know what it looks like, and I never... <laughs> there's no way I could. Of course, <laughs> that, that would be... It would be the roughly that conversation in Japanese. I know, yeah. Do yeah. you know, um, you just mentioned there about, sort of, no knickers and that. <laughs> it's sure. just gonna be your Auntie Nora. <laughs> no, 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 no. Right. It's just, you know, like, the... the last flat that I lived in, I always had a good view across the road and I could see, uh... It was the hairy, hairy. There was the hairy Chinese, not hairy Chinese kid. He, he was just a Chinese kid, actually. Yeah, yeah. Running because that's rare, isn't it? Hairy Chinese kids, very yeah. rare, isn't it? Yeah. There's only one official sighting, isn't <laughs> there? <laughs> in one of those uh, shit little magazines that you buy. And, and there was the old woman who didn't move. She was just sat there reading the book all who the time. Who we think possibly died, and no right one up. came round yeah, for weeks. Yeah. But and now I've moved, right? Mm. And it was quiet for a bit. I always look at what view I'm getting, sure. right? Uh, looks across, and it was just sort of empty sort of flats ready for people to move in and yeah. that, right? Anyway, people are in there now, <laughs> right? Um, and they've put all the furniture in, but right. I haven't put any curtains up, oh. right? So anyway, I'm, I'm sort of washing up, just having a, having a look out the window, yeah. right? Uh, girl sort of, uh, wandering about, you know, knickers on, right? With no knickers on? You mean no naked? Knickers. Well, she had a bra on. Right, but, okay. But, uh, She's no probably knickers. looking for a knicker. So, I thought, oh. And I don't know how long I was looking. No. <laughs> right. But anyway, she looks across. Oh, God. I think she spotted me. Yeah. I think, oh, God. I felt really bad. Yeah. I said to Suzanne. Sorry, is this some sort of peeping Tom confession? <laughs> no idea. Well, he's, he's not, that's the thing, though. Peepington. I, if, if I was peeping, she was peeping as well, because she was looking over. Works both ways, doesn't it? Yeah, but, but yeah, yeah, all she could see of you was your bald head. Yeah. No, no. But and your hands it, moving as you were washing up. <laughs> <laughs> and some <laughs> white looking substance <laughs> rotting up. Particularly stubborn stain on yeah. this glass. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine if she looked across. I'm assuming uh, the sink is lower but, than the window. But but did, didn't yeah. she just like just cover up or something? Or she looked back and go, oh, you're looking at you're looking at my vanity. Well, <laughs> the thing I did. What? I thought, oh, just sort of drop me boxer short. Because I what? thought. Well, Suzanne said, "What are you doing? What are you talking about?" What are you talking about? No, just, just, just so they can see me, cheeks of me. What are you ask. talking about? No, they, because I thought, 
if she thinks I'm ro walking about in the nude as well, then we've both got something out of it. Carl! This sounds like, this sounds like a bad excuse in court. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know. Um, so sorry, you immediately, so you were looking at a woman dancing around naked, right? So well, the, just... the only thing you could do was immediately uh, drop your boxer shorts. So she looked across, saw you fully clothed, saw you took your no, boxer no, shorts. wouldn't have done because it's sort of just the top half and the sink's at a side angle, so I was sort of looking out. So, she wouldn't, have shown, so she wouldn't have seen your trousers then anyway? No, she did. I, I moved in front of the window. So more. you then made <laughs> them- <laughs> You actually <laughs> in front of the window. Oh, this is amazing! So you climbed in front oh. of the window- uh, To oh, show oh, off- No, your, your, it wasn't naked no, Su Susan said, what are you doing? And I, I said- she did! <laughs> What are you looking at? So I sent you in here to clean what up. What are you doing? I'm just, I'm just taking my trousers down, standing out of the window. <laughs> Why? Because there's a naked woman across the road. What do you think I'm doing, Suzanne? <laughs> I'm exposing <laughs> myself while looking at some free <laughs> money. Leave it, leave it, leave it. What's up with you, Suzanne? Anyway. Oh, wait a minute, can I just get... <laughs> A final question. <laughs> what did the woman yeah. across the way? What yeah. happened? What, what was her reaction? I didn't look again. I just thought oh. you've, you've seen a bit of action as well. We're both happy. Let's let's leave it. Brilliant. So, so were you waddling around like a penguin with your trousers around your ankles? Yeah. I just was walking about, and Suzanne said, "What are you doing?" I said, "I'll explain to you in a bit, but don't look out the window yeah. because then it's Excellent. obvious." Then, yeah. her, then he sees that she calls her husband to look at Carl walking around naked. He goes, "Oh, she's got a quick, Suzanne, get him out. <laughs> yeah. There's only one with him. To get some more friends. <laughs> They've got one more." Okay, let's have a great show, everyone. Oh, yeah, good luck. Good luck. Good luck um, you, right, yeah. that was Jane's Addiction, just because, on XFM 104.9. Right, everybody up, let's give them a great show, yeah? Two hours of, like, fun chat. Let's keep it, you know, let's keep it cutting edge. Let's not be too, I mean, that's what the listeners of XFM would, oh, no, it isn't, is it? No, because, hold on, wait, wait a minute, because we came in yesterday and did this little skit, didn't we, where we bleeped it out. We little sketch. It was quite annoying, it was quite then controversial. Carl called me last night and... We're not allowed to play it out. Oh, it's, we've been censored. Yeah. Uh, Interesting. That's, Interesting. Yeah. So it's a cutting edge alternative station. Wants to push the boundaries. Wants to be thought of as yeah. rock and roll, a bit punk, a bit punk rock. Yeah. But I, we're not cause I, cause to I, cause I, um, uh, I said something about the radio authority. I bleeped it out. Sure. What I called them. Yeah. But uh, couldn't do it. Done no, it right, before. Censored. Couldn't do it. Censored. Carl mm -hmm. agrees though. What's your thoughts, Carl? You agree with that? Yeah, or? I agree. Yeah. Why? Mm -hmm. What's the point? Well, it was funny, wasn't it? And it wasn't offensive, not, was it? Not really. It's not some of the best stuff that would have ever gone out on this show, but, you know. Right, what are you putting up against, exactly? <laughs> <laughs> Cheeky Freak of the Week? Well, that, that springs to mind. Yeah. And Rockbusters? But, I mean, yeah. the thing is, you know, the things that you have put out there, I mean, we, we better be really careful. Who's worried about complaints? I mean, it's not just swearing, is it? It's taste and decency mm, and everything. Yeah. So, we can't, we can't laugh about the disabled anymore no. in the Cheeky Freak of the Week. Mm. Uh can't do stories about elderly relatives with genitals looking like a split tennis ball. Right. Um, can't tell your bad dad putting a child with learning difficulties in a bin. So, what, should we just play music? I think that's all it's gonna have to be, yeah. Play Accident Will Happen by Elvis Costello on XFM 104.9. Carl's a little bit stressed, because it's not his fault, it was the boss that overruled him. He came along. What did he do? He heard you, he heard you listening to it. Yeah. What did he say? He said, it's what's that? I said, it's what Ricky wants to play out tomorrow. Yeah. And he said, well, can't go out like that. Too many... But they all bleeped. We bleep. We bleeped the swear words. Yeah, but he didn't want it to go out. I mean, you've got to remember, right, we came, you came in yesterday to have a chat about what we're gonna do. Yeah. One of the topics that I said, let's talk about, which yeah. I came up with, yeah. was, let's talk about swearing. No, you said you never had a problem with swearing, which is normally... Yeah, that's right. And then we did the thing about, isn't it funny that you can, the you know, you know the thing about you can bleep... Uh, a swear word by taking out the vowel. So we're going, so it's the vowel that's offensive. And we did a little sketch around that and then ended, you know, uh, and, uh, he wanted to completely obliterate the word in the end, didn't want to put the thing in that we said about the radio authority, which I don't, I don't think, I think it was valid and wouldn't have got a complaint. Yeah, you but know, at the end of the day, he's the boss and what, what he says goes, doesn't it? Sure. So, Fuck. Fuck. yeah, I was just going to say, <laughs> Well, but, 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 but what you got to remember what? is what he also said is if you want to pay the 70 grand fine, what? then go well, ahead and do it, be, Steve. There wouldn't be a 70 grand fine, there, would there? Well, you don't know what it'd be. But will you pay it? Will you pay for my mortgage? Will you pay for his mortgage? Will, will you feed his kids? He wouldn't be fired. What do you mean? Well, if, I tell you what, if it's not a fine, we'd lose the licence, then we'd all be fired. Right. When you're sat do you at home. seriously think you'd lose the licence for that sketch? Well, Does he really seriously think well, you'd lose know, the licence? It's, it is, 
not the worst thing we've ever put out or done or ever will do. Yeah, but it's the fact that he said don't put it out and you're like, you know, throwing your toys out of the pram. <laughs> oh, I wanna, I wanna say it, I wanna say it, how old are you? But you still want to put swearing out. It's, that, it's a discussion about the radio authority and the way people are interested. Yeah, leave it, let's don't move get on. annoyed. Yeah, but I'm annoyed because you've been at it since about half past twelve. <laughs> I know, well, I, I like to get in early to plan the show. Yeah, but there's been no planning. So, to be honest, I'd turn off today, anyone listening, because there's nothing. Carl, there's never anything. There is, there's sometimes some good things, but today, seriously, what is there? What is I'd, there? I'd, I'd, I'd leave it. There was something half decent that's been on this show. Loads of little interesting topics. Right? I can't remember any. Right, gays in toilets. Yeah. Mm, not particularly interesting. Fascinating to you, perhaps. Right, well, I'd prefer to hear that than just a load of swear words. Well, we, we're not gonna, we wouldn't have heard any swear words, we'd have heard some bleeping. Right then, so that's, that's entertaining, isn't it? Load of bleeps. It's just because you don't want to stand up to your boss or say anything. Don't get annoyed with that. I'd stand up to all, uh, if, if I agree with what I'm arguing about, but I'm not falling out with him over some crappy thing you want to play out. Don't, don't say know. crappy. Don't well, don't it doesn't matter, because I'm not here next week, I tell you that, I've canned this in. Don't right? say so crappy. So if Andrew is listening, don't someone say else can be here next week. Play record. We apologise for the word crap. That's out of order, we should be playing. Big Sir, the thrills on XFM 104.9. Starting off another nice atmosphere again in the studio. Don't blame me, it's not my fault. No, I know, I know. Well, it's your fault mainly. <laughs> yeah. You are bad, you are quite bad. But don't, come on, don't. No, come on, you are. Don't yeah. try and win him round just because he scared you. <laughs> I don't know who's that against. Is it me <laughs> or you, I don't yeah. know, no. It's you. <laughs> right, uh, well, I'm not a coward. No. I'm not a coward. Okay, I'm, just, I'm just thinking of the listeners, Rick, and I just want them to be entertained. Yeah. Luckily, that's not a big problem for us. <laughs> what? <laughs> what, you mean we're effortlessly entertaining or there's no listeners? Well, yeah, somewhere, somewhere in between. Yeah. Sure. Carl, what's happened to you this week, mate? Now it's happened. <laughs> 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 come on. Well, nothing's just, happened. Come on. I came in, I came in and he had an hour lunch break. You know, he's sort of like he never gets a break. I came in one day, he was out for an hour, and I sat in a little chat with Andrew Phillips about, you know, where we were going with the show and, you know. Where are we <laughs> going with it? You've got really <laughs> Ah, dear. <laughs> it's oh. how far we can run it into the grave. Uh, yeah, no, if we go off air, it certainly won't be through, uh, being cutting edge or controversial <laughs> because <laughs> people are just turned off because it's too boring to listen <laughs> to. Brack. Um, but, uh, he was out for an hour. Having a lunch break for an hour. Oh, yeah. he's too busy. I know, yeah. It's interesting. Uh, so, uh... I got, actually, on the uh, subject of that, I noticed Dan here has emailed in. He says, I was listening to last week's show and I think Carl is taking his job for granted. Uh, I'd love to swap with him for a week. My qualifications are that I can press play on a CD player <laughs> and stop. Carl, what do you think of that? And it can, can come in next week, seriously. Yeah. It says he- Don't get ratty, Carl. I'm We're not being ratty. Dan, email me. You know me address, email, it'll be sorted out, you can be here next week. <laughs> Dan, Dan suggested we could call it Carl Idol, where people audition each week, or perhaps yeah. Bone Idol. <laughs> I like that. Bone Idol. Brilliant. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have, we, have we got a monkey news, Carl? Uh, don't know if I can be bothered. <laughs> Play a record. Play a record. <laughs> Pretenders. <laughs> um, Kid. Oh, dear. On High XFM. Well, I know 4.9. That's professionalism, isn't it? Yeah, that is unbelievable. <laughs> Ricky, you were, I mean, I don't know if I can describe it really, the yeah. scene. You were going mental, you were yeah. shouting, you were really being quite an unpleasant character. But well, it's wait, just, the mic's come on, Rick, and yeah. you're absolute, Funny, you're a charmer. Funny, well, well, funny how people get annoyed. Carl, Carl said levels. that, uh, we don't have to be here next week if Andrew gets annoyed. I was going, I went, this is entertainment. He plays us to entertain. We haven't done anything against the law yet, have we? Or uh, offensive, or against the way sorry. Carl said crap, but I think we'll get away with that. Yeah. So what is there to worry about? Exactly. Right, let's just draw a line under the beginning yeah, of the show. Yeah, let's start again. Yeah, come on. Can we just on. hug and make up? Can we just have a big yeah. kiss? Yeah. yeah, come on. No, don't that. Just, Carl, what have we got? <laughs> What's on the list? We've done swearing, we've done swearing. That's that sorted out. <laughs> Well, no, your point was more that you- weren't you interested in- in why swearing people find it offensive? Yeah, a little bit Cause that, that seems obvious to me. Cause you- cause offensive. you were saying yesterday that you don't, never understood why people find it offensive, weren't that's you? That's right, that's right. Yeah. But you- I know. Well, yeah. come on. Yeah, but that's what I was saying to you, why you can't do it on the radio, cause people find it offensive for some reason. I don't yeah. agree with it, but some people do. Yeah. I'm saying everyone swears. Bleep it out, I would. But I- see, this Bleep is it out. Thing. Bleep it out, that's my- that's my theory. But you say that everyone swears, not everyone does swear. I don't know why you've got this in your head that everyone swears. I'm convinced. Everyone. What? Everyone. Like, you know, religious people, the religious leaders. Jesus. The I bet Jesus swore. <laughs> right. What's your evidence for that? 
No, I'm just thinking, I mean, things are better now than they were back then. Right? Right. He's wandering about in his sandals, getting pebbles stuck in there and stuff, and that's <laughs> annoying. Nails in his hand, that must have hurt. What yeah. I'm saying is- That's like, offensive. No, that, it's not, though. That's blasphemous. No, but what I'm- Don't like, laugh at- Don't laugh at the crucifixion. Play a record. I'm not- I'm not laughing at that, though. That is terrible. I'm can just saying. Sure? No, you can email in, um, if you want to complain. Carl. Yeah? Not talking at xfm.co.uk. Well, it's not offensive, though. I'm just saying it's a fact. When you stub your little toe- you let, uh, let out a little effing and jeffing. And what do you think he, he, he is? He's <laughs> effing and jeffing. So the kind of ancient Hebrew version of effing and jeffing. Ooh, oh, I'm yeah. worried about this. I'm worried about this. This is naughty. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. This, oh, I'm worried when about did this. you start swearing? I, I started swearing at school. Right. I hope you haven't offended any Christians. Right, there's a lad at, at my school, right, who, uh got caught swearing. I mean, I got caught and I got- When I got, you say got caught, well, how, how were you, what was it, you were uh, like, rev rolling the bike sheds <laughs> having a swear? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got any MF? <laughs> yeah. No, I've only got one C left, it's my dad's. <laughs> oh, come on, let's have a go on it. Let's have, let's say unt. Yeah. Let me say the unt. No. Get the older kids to buy you some swearing. No, no, just, just smoke it down to the car. <laughs> yeah. So right. you're, yeah, you're rolling the bike sheds having a swear. Yeah. And a uh, teacher is, is him say, right, the S word. The S word. The S word. Well, we? well, yeah. So, uh, the way, the way, the way this teacher dealt with it, he, uh, he said, right, it's not a clever word to use. And he tried to make him get sick of using it <laughs> by, he had to write an essay using that word 300 times. Right? Yeah. So, I would have loved that. But that's I would just have practice that. for a kid. But that is like that is like the the, the father catching the kid with a cigar and making, him making smoke. It smoke. All the way yeah, yeah. Doesn't work with heroin <laughs> if you've got a young teenager <laughs> who's jacked up for the first time. <laughs> yeah, it can be dangerous. The funny thing is, though, right? His mum found his textbook. <laughs> of course, <laughs> thought he was depressed and wanted to take him counselling because <laughs> everything was s. He was writing down. This is and did and it work? Did he? Did he? Did it wean him? No, nah, did he? Yeah. The teacher, I mean, he, he disappeared. He, he got kicked out for, um, hitting a kid on the head with a bit of wood. So... It wasn't you, was it? <laughs> that was <you're> not. <laughs> Longview. Further. That's great, that. That's a good tune. Can I just give a big shout out, Rick? Go on. To, uh, John Kay. He's listening online in Los Angeles, City of Angels. Brilliant. It's his first time listening to the show. Um, who knows what he's making of it. I wonder if we should explain what up, Carl is to him. He's up early. Well, he's got up apparently to record it and then he's gone, gone back to bed. Oh, right. So, so he's listening to it any time. So, uh, oh, yeah. Exactly. Carl, uh, well, Can you Carl, explain what he is? Um, well, he's, he's a little bit of a grumpy, spoiled, lazy prat at the moment. Oh, yeah, that's but usually he's quite a funny, nice, sort of genuine guy who's in awe of the world if it's furry. Mm. And doesn't really <laughs> care if it isn't. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, we're all one big happy family. You're come on, Carl. Family. Attitude up. You're happy. Right? Happy. If we're happy, the listener is happy. We yeah. were talking about, uh, <laughs> schools, <laughs> swearing, kids at school. Mm. I, I just remember at school, like, loads of my friends now are becoming teachers. Yeah. And I just, I can't imagine what it must be like in an environment with kids. Because when we were at school, I mean, not particularly me, but lots of people in the, in the class, and you'd all end up doing it, would just treat teachers like they were, they weren't humans, like they yeah. were just creatures from another well, planet that were there to be tormented. Because, yeah, it's, it's, it's a game, isn't it, to see how far you can wind someone up to distraction. But is it, and but most is it, people grow out of that. But is it because, <laughs> not everyone, but especially they've got a bit of cash in their pocket now, <laughs> and uh, a little bit of success. They tend to think that that gives them licence to treat people badly, it's terrible. But, <laughs> okay. uh, but I remember there was a guy, this is such a terrible story, there was a, there was a teacher, he came in and he was teaching us and, and one kid, one of the hard nuts, he'd found out that this, this guy's, he lived on his own and he had a cat and the cat got run over. Mm. And, and so we, we got in early, like everyone was in early and before the teacher came in and this kid drew a picture of a cat being run over by a car in chalk on the blackboard, a huge picture of it. And the teacher just came in, saw it, burst into tears and ran out. And the thing is, that was like the beginning of term, so he could never get us back after that. There was never going to be any respect for him. It was just- Cause you cry, I know, yeah. It's just like, I just remember now thinking about it, just thinking- I mean, at the time I remember thinking it was bad, but now it's just heartbreaking. It's devastating. I know. It's just if so- they just forget, they let their guard down a little yeah. bit. Do you ever do you the one where you just- Mmm. Mm, just humming. Yeah. And, and, yeah. everyone, and he'd tell us to stop it and then everyone was just going We used to, there was one teacher, uh, me and my mate used to go up to him and, and just, when we was talking to the other one, just sort of sniff him <laughs> slightly and then sort of like, so he, so he goes, what, I got nothing. And he just, he'd, just <laughs> he'd walk away sniffing his armpit. But those kind of mind games, it's like- I know. Incredible. Once, right, I was talking about this in the week actually, we had this, uh, um, 
uh, teacher, and he must have been sort of like, sort of 60 then, right? And we're all about sort of like 12. We had to do French, you had to put your thing on the booth, and it was a, uh, I, t I told you something, Le Chat est uh, le, you know, and all that, right? And rep that repete, mean? um, cats on the wall, right? right. Um, and, uh, it, you'd repeat it in French, and of course everyone was going, F, <laughs> see, to, yeah, uh, yeah, just yeah. like, just for fun. And he heard this and he listened back to all of them and he realised it goes, and he went mental. He went, uh, uh, I don't believe this! Do you know how much these cost? He was going mad and he was going red and bursting like Carl was earlier. And it was like, I just, I can't stand this anymore. And he, he picked up an exercise book and said, look at this exercise book! Look! And, uh, um, I won't say the kid's name. Was, he went, so and so, look, oh look, oh look, he's put, and, uh, his, I'll change his name, um, Smithers. He went, oh, look, he's put Smithers in his shit. Oh, oh, he goes, oh, he's got clever on this side. He's put Smithers in a lump of shit. That's good. <laughs> right? And oh. he went berserk. He went, he went, oh, look, he's drawn a picture of a penis with wings. And he's written underneath, Dicky Bird. He went, is that clever? He went, do you want me to put a piece of paper up so you can come and write swear words and draw ladies' genitals all day? And I went, <laughs> like that laugh. He went, I'm glad you think. And he stormed out. Oh, God. Yeah. And, and did he ever come back? No, but we put the bit of paper up for him and said, <laughs> nice. look, look what yeah. you've done, you sir. <laughs> That's a fanny. Yeah. There's some knobs. Yeah. Was it biology? Uh, no, it was French. Oh, French, of course. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I just remember things like games like, um, there was some cupboards at the back of the, one of the, the I think the maths class, and one kid just got in the, in the cupboard before the teacher came, and then sat in there for like, you know, 45 minutes, and just towards the end of the, the thing just came out. Brilliant. Just came out and just went, oh, and sat down. And just, just things like that, which just kind of, it's not, I don't know what it is, or I don't know what, it's I just an utter a, lack of respect. I played it? a trick like that once in my first year at college. This is pathetic, right? We're on a hall of residence, right? And there was this woman, um, sort of, sort of uh, middle-aged woman come around in a twin set, and I think she was from a bank, where she was doing students, can you do a bank count? And, um, we knew she was coming up the corridor and she was not right, and so my mate got in my wardrobe, in this little room, right? Just sat there, she came and I said, I said, have you banked? I said, uh, yeah, I've banked. I said, okay, can I just do it? And there was a knock on the wardrobe, I went, I went, come in, <laughs> and he just came out, and I went, I went, all right, and he left, right? And she just looked at me and I started laughing, I went, sorry, she went, you're not interested, I went, no. <laughs> But it just fell flat. It just uh, fell flat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Oh dear. Carl, a little bit happier now? Yeah. I'm mm. happy. What, you know, what have you done this week? Doesn't bother me. Doesn't no, bother what have you done me. this week? Doesn't bother me. No, Carl, answer the question. The producer, what have you done this week? A few mm. things. Oh, it's funny, right? Because when he's moaning about, uh, I was talking about, I'd caught him out. He, he says he doesn't get a lunch break. He had over an hour, um, and uh, and then he went. I think he went quite early that night to get a, a hob that hadn't been delivered or something so. And, uh, I said to, uh, was it James Hyman was in, wasn't he? Yeah, that's right. And I said, um, James, he's always complaining about working, does he work hard? And he went, well, he doesn't work as hard as he used to. Mm, play a record, can't we? Interesting. Don't want to really play hit the start mm, button now, I might do it in a bit, a bit lazy. Mm, I'm not saying you're lazy! I'm saying, you know, Ooh. maybe some people don't think you work as hard as you do, that's the, that's the way of the world. I'm not saying you don't work hard! Just reporting speech, really, with James Hyman. Calling him a liar? Play a record. Can't be bothered. Play a record, Carl. Mm -hmm. well, I reckon we could do this all the way through, Billy Bragg. Mm -hmm. Play a record, though. Let's not, let's not ruin it. It's not Billy Bragg's fault. No, not that at all. He's written some good tunes, old Billy Bragg. Yes. That's one of them. Yeah. Waiting for the great leap forward. Uh, what station are we on? XFM 104.9. Yeah, with Carl Pilkington. Carl, what do you think of it so far? What, of what? This you, today? You, you weren't up for it, weren't it? And now it's turned out great and you're, are you, you a little bit happier? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it's good, yeah. Good. Just talking earlier about teachers, weren't they? Have you got any amusing anecdotes about teachers or anything around that subject? I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't go to school that much. Uh Go on. When I did, it was, uh I was talking to Suzanne about it the other day, how, how, you know, she goes out with me now and she thinks I'm, you know, I'm great. She's, she's, yeah. she's lucky what she's got. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, she's done well. Right? Yeah. Um, but I, I was the sort of kid who she would have hated at school because I never had, like, a pen. Oh, yeah, I know what the sort you are. Never a pencil case or any stuff. I'd start off the, 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 like, the term I would. 
And yeah. I'd like, you know, a, a brand new carrier bag with me stuff in. <laughs> a brand new yeah. carrier bag. Classy. classy. And, uh... Well, you've got to have somewhere to <clears throat> put the stuff you've nicked from Woolworths in, haven't you? <laughs> right, so, <laughs> so that, that'd be there. But then by the time, like, a couple of weeks down, I'd, I'd put my pen down, I would have lost it, and mm. then I'm sort of going around saying, can I borrow a pen? You didn't try sticking it up your nose, it's not still lodged up there. <laughs> it's not, it's not, no, no. no. Well, the, the the funny thing with like you know you were talking about teachers and stuff. Were you disruptive? Were you a disruptive kid? Were not you the really. Causing trouble? No, not really. I no, was he wouldn't cause trouble. He's terrified of the boss, isn't he? No, it's not that. It's just that. What's the point in winding people up? I find it quite annoying if people do that. <laughs> so I, I don't wish it up on anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you wind Steve up then? Sometime? I don't wind him up. You I do. Don't wind you him have done, but no, come on, let's, let's, let's not let's not argue. We're getting on well then. Come on, Carl. And like the teachers, because I'd lived on this estate, right? Loads of stuff used to get nicked and go missing and. What have you? Blackboards, and desks. And their way, no, like the telly the and the video. Telly video oh, really? and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And, uh, the projector thing and all that. Mm. So, the way they used to try and find it, right, my little conspiracy, as you know I'm good at them. Yeah, you, well, yeah, yeah. Um, what they used to do is set your own work and say, right, draw like a bird's eye view of your house. <laughs> Right? But right. draw everything you've got in your house <laughs> right. in it as well. So if you've got, I don't know, if you've got anything in the loft, make sure you draw it. Right. So people with kids would come in with overhead projectors. Well, that's th that was the idea, Chalk. I think, behind Guns. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so, the aircraft guns in the shed. So your, the picture you did at your, for your home, presumably- Got nothing from me. Nothing. I didn't no. do it, I didn't do it. I'm not, he, he used to hand it in, empty house, I'm not a grass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And nor the illegal immigrants living in the Just kitchen. Just a picture of your auntie Nora. Yeah. What's that, is that, have you been, have you been stealing tennis balls? Yeah. No, that's not a split tennis ball. <laughs> that's my auntie Nora. Uh, but what about all the stuff, what, didn't you have to draw all the stuff that your father had nicked? <laughs> 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 all the stuff, you know. Uh, listen, listen, are we doing Songs of Phrase today? Cos Rockbusters has gone. What Songs of Phrase again? I, I can't remember, I, tried yes. to, I think I've blanked it out. Yeah. When we do, uh, something that's been said a few times on the show. Right. Right? Um, <laughs> it's been said a few times. Black! I'm scared of Andrew Phillips! Black! I need my job on it! Black! Go on, sorry, you were speaking, Carl. <laughs> uh, so we take a phrase from the show, right, and just get songs like, the words from the songs, edit them together, so something it says like, that phrase. Ah! Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. No, just go on, go on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on, Carl. Come on. Come so, on. are we doing it? <laughs> Sorry, uh, so, yeah, so what's the phrase you've come up with? The phrase is, um, found... is, is no more Cheeky Freak of the Week. No more. No more Cheeky Freak of the Week? No is there not having, we're not having that anymore? Well, yeah. no, because it's offensive, and if we're worried about offending people, to uh, talk about people with disabilities, well, like, yeah, but that's, that's like conjoined twins and women who are uh, born with, like, um, deformed legs, yeah, and you never, call them dog woman, so, uh, you know, you've got to be careful. You've already, you've already insulted Christ, let's not do, uh, disability, let's do, uh, Songs of Phrase, well, shall we? Cheeky Freak of the Week was never how to offend anyone. No. It was to make you no, realise we don't lucky. try and offend people, we try and entertain them. Right, do you know the funny <laughs> thing is, do you know the funny thing is, right, you're saying about, you know, being cruel about people and stuff, it goes on all the time. On the news the other night, do you know those Siamese twins that didn't make it through the operation? Yes, yeah. Right? And this is why I'm stopping it, because I don't want people to think we're having a go at disabled people and sure. stuff. Right? On the news, right? Yes. Before that operation, the doctors said, we're gonna try and sort this out, all the doctors are gonna get their heads together. Is that a good phrase right. to use? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Carl, play record. No, I'm play just- record. I'm... Oh. Are you offended, Rick? Are you- Oh, are you offended, Rick? You're, ready. you're the one that's- That's the- you've Yeah, but I'm saying, we're not out to offend anyone, yet it's always going on. People well, are always having a go. Please don't bring it down. Play a record. No. Uh, I hate him. I hate him. Darkness. Growing on me. You love the darkness, don't you? Yeah. I was lucky enough to see him. They were doing I like him as well. Thing. Is it people good? told me it's a bit, it's a bit too jokey or yeah. a bit too tongue in cheek, but it isn't really. If you don't know that, it sounds great. Ooh. It just sounds like sort of retro seventies rock. It's, yeah. oh, it's great. Oh, yeah, brilliant. It's nice to have rock back. I think you'll agree. B big time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> High five, man. High five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet, sweet, mate. Sweet. Um, songs of phrase. It's the mighty return of songs of phrase. No one has uh, requested that. It's no. not, not, not due to public appearance. <laughs> 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 a lot of people have requested some swearing. They have indeed. But a lot, we had a lot of emails for that, but go on, Carl. And, uh, <laughs> remind us again what exactly Songs of Phrase is and why we should care. It's just a phrase <laughs> that we took from the show, make up by taking words out of a song, edited it together. 
Right? <laughs> the phrase that we're doing is no more Cheeky Freak of the Week. No more Cheeky Freak it of the Week. sounds like this. No more Cheeky Freak of the Week. <laughs> right, so... No, that's you, nigh on impossible. Play so again. You got, you Play got again. Email in, you got to email in with all the songs that you can hear there. Right? There's, I think it's five songs And we just want the names of the songs? Yeah, that'll do. Okay. All right. Do we just hear it again? No more Cheeky Freak of the Right. It, yeah, it is good. It's probably one of the best you've done. It's very tricky, though. It's a, I mean, uh, uh, that's not too tricky. Play it again. No more freak of the week. How many have you got? Do you think, Rick? Just uh, uh, well, I've I've noticed the same person singing twice. Is that a, right? In a band and solo. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, and I know one I track think, straight away from uh, the word. Can I just say I do think naming the, the songs is a bit tricky. Let's just name the artists. Is that right? Just the artists. Just, just the artists. Just change the rules slightly. Yeah. Um, before we play it again, just let you know what the prizes are. We've got on DVD later with Jules Holland louder. Lots of the alternative acts he's had on there. Um, Brilliant. A DVD. There, a couple of DVDs all, with Boogie 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 Piano over the top. <laughs> Let's hope so. Brilliant. I can't. Can't Jason wait. Chainer on there. Stereophonics. We've got Sonic Youth, Ash, Hole, Queens of the Stone Age, Foo Fighters. Quite good. Um, once again, Cruise of the Gods on DVD. Sorry, Rob Royden and Steve Coogan. That was on at Christmas. It's not bad. It's not the um, same one. They, they haven't been sending that back. <laughs> We've been giving out different ones each we week. We have indeed. Uh, this is an album just called quite simply I Love You. Yeah. And you'll be pleased because there's the likes of Mel C, Cliff Richard and the Hollies on there. Brilliant. Excellent. The best chill out album ever. We've got the Beach Boys on there. Elvis Costello, Pink Floyd, Coldplay. That's not bad. And this is the one that's most interesting, I think. The American Song Poem Anthology. I've not heard it yet, but apparently, I think what it is is an anthology of um, recordings that were made apparently in, the, I think maybe 50s or 60s America. You could, there was a particular organisation, you could send in songs or lyrics that you'd written at home and they would send oh, it to right. music and record it for you. And this is a compilation of them. So obviously it's, there's some quite uh, idiosyncratic and odd little things on there. I think it's probably worth a listen. So not bad prizes at all, Carl. Let's play it again. No more freak of the week. Well, that's, we've got, we've started that going. Just the artists <laughs> then. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Once more, Carl. No more freak of the week. See, we're just great. Yeah, not bad at all. A little bit of elbow. Nice to hear them again. This is the one red. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais. Sure, 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 sure. Elbow and red. Good tune. The old Spanish archer. Alright? Yeah, elbow. I'm oh, sorry, you've lost me. I wasn't listening. Elbow. Elbow. Alright. <laughs> Sony award winning from Ricky Gervais. <laughs> well, we're not allowed to do anything. Sure, but uh, Andrew likes those sort of things. Eh? <laughs> uh, Rick, um, <laughs> I can tell you now that the. <laughs> The answers to songs of phrase are quite literally dribbling in. <laughs> uh, I think there's two, may maybe three answers so far. So, uh, very excited about that. And, uh, we just had an email from Dan. He says, my Mrs. Lynn is pregnant and is eight days overdue. Uh, Carl, could you offer any words of encouragement to coax the baby down the birth canal? I've sat Lynn only inches away from the speaker to allow optimum audio transfer to the uterus. What would you say to that, uh, child there, just to lure it out? To the wide world, Carl. I wouldn't. I wouldn't rush out. To be honest. <laughs> right. It's not good, is it? Out here. Sure. And I don't really want to talk about kids either, because Suzanne's mates just had one, and now she wants one. Oh God. Yeah. Please never bring a child into the world, Carl. Promise us that. <laughs> they just bore me. Have you seen? There's loads of people in the office who have got them now, and they've all got baby pictures everywhere, and they're all like, "Isn't it nice looking?" And it's like, no, it's not. They all look the same. You know Mel, what I mean? All like Mel Smith. <laughs> Don't they? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's that theory, actually, right? Do you know how I've said before about babies, right? Yeah. But like little old people. Yeah. There was, uh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Another of the great theories. <laughs> no, no, the fact that, you know, you're born and you sort of, you know, you've got no teeth, you've got a little bald head, you yeah. can't control your your bodily functions and that. Sure. Yeah. Then you get to like. Sorry, you're describing yourself. Yeah, what? I was just saying, you've got a day just no, I'm just it, aren't saying, it? that's how you're born. Yep. Then you get to about 70 or whatever. Yeah. All well, that starts to happen again, doesn't it? Right. Yeah. Now, there was a story in America about, just backing this up again, 70 year old fella. 70 year old fella, okay. Li little bald head. Yeah. Right? Probably no teeth. No. Nah. Probably, yeah. Uh, nappy and that, right? Yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> goes, yeah. goes it's into a. 70 year olds uh, pop, pop the old nappy on on your 70th birthday, take your teeth out. Goes into an off license to get some beer. Doesn't get served because he didn't think he was old enough. 
Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, okay. Oh, hey, hey, wait a minute. Right, Carl, wait. Carl's back. Carl's back. Wait a minute. No, I'm sorry. Okay. They, so they thought he was right, a okay, giant forget baby it. that right. walked into the forget place. It. Weird, Steve, it? forget it. Carl, please. Forget I need it. Carl to answer. No, that, that, I mean, that's the story, but it's weird, isn't it? That's what I'm true. saying, it just backed up. The guy true. in an off-licence yeah. thought that a giant baby <laughs> that had waddled a into an off-licence. A 70-year-old wrinkled baby in an overcoat, <laughs> stuck in Werther's original, smoking a pipe and going, I can't believe it, the price is not the same as they were, right, was a small child. Well, yeah, weird, isn't it? Play a record, you're an idiot. Well, what's happening with Songs of Phrase? Forget it. Uh, Forget well, it. No, as, I say, um, as I say, the answers um, are, are dribbling in and... Um, can I'm we, sure can we run this radio station for a week? Yeah, but the thing is, if we genuinely wanted to do a good job at that, we'd have to fight ourselves straight away. No, do you know what I mean, though? Just to sort out the playlist, let DJs, you know what I mean? Sort out the, what can be said and what can't. Just for one week. Yeah, see if we can... <laughs> give it a bit of... <laughs> shall we? Well, what would you do? I don't know, just the phrase pissing in the wind we need to. Well, I know, yeah. Well, we're, we're, are we going to even meet this week? Because it's, you know, we've wasted time pre-recording stuff that we can't put out. I don't know if it's worth... still on that. He is still on it. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I've let it go, but he's still on it. What else is on the list? What list? <laughs> on the list, I said to you yesterday, let's sit down and have a chat. I yeah. thought I threw that away, I thought it was just a piece of crap. <laughs> you, you can't say crap. <laughs> You're saying You should have bleeped that. I know, why don't you bleep that? Why don't we, why don't we pre-record the whole show, then we only have to come in once? What do you think of that, Carl? Carl. Whatever. Carl. Steve, what Carl. are we doing with I seriously think Carl. if we put out last week's show, would anyone know Carl. 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 Play a record. He's driving me mad Carl. Now, Carl. Carl. Seriously, he's driving me mad. Carl. Press the button. Please. Carl. Carl. I'm sick of it. Carl. 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 <laughs> Black Rebel Motorcycle Club. Stop. On XFM. 104.9. I reckon we could run it for a week just to do, just to do a few Would little things. Bother, though, I mean... No, but I mean, just like... You know, have a look at the playlist a little bit. Yeah, get yeah. some. Another phrase, polishing a turd. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just another one that springs to mind. <laughs> you know? Are you allowed to say that, Carl? What, turd? Yeah. <laughs> I think so. That's all well, right. you said it, so you're the producer. Yeah, that's <laughs> all right. All right? Yeah. I'll tell you, I've got it together. Capital. Oh, now that's a classic station. I was, I came in in the week to just check Carl out if he was here, he wasn't, he was out for about a, an hour or so. And, um, I heard in the lift, I don't know what DJ it was on, uh, he just went and, uh, he was talking about that little girl, Summer, who, uh, went missing, but then she was just found reading the book. And I yeah. swear, right, I, I swear, he went, uh, and there's a lovely, uh, lovely picture of her there, just, uh, just reading the book. So, uh, what a happy ending. It's a shame they don't all end like that. Oh, God. And he played a record. What's his point? Unbelievable. I mean, what's that? I don't what? know. It's those people who think that they're being a little, what, a little bit philo philosophical, but yeah. profound. Yeah, and then just everyone goes, oh. oh. Thank you very much. Oh. Yeah. I noticed in the, uh, the story of Summer, the little girl that went missing, I don't know if you re read that it, it mentioned her, f her family. Now, it mentioned the, the father of the house. I don't know if it's her father or certainly the guy, that, the, the parent, the, the male parent. And it was like, it was something like, I, I think, I don't want to, you know, libel him, but it was something like Paul 24 and he's a graphic designer, recently changed his name to Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder what, what exactly is that? How, how is he, how is, uh, what family he, is that, uh, really? Uh, yeah. You know, I uh, don't want to, I'm always a little bit worried about people who change their well, names adults, to some to, to really, really cool. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, 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 Kevin Smethurst isn't, you know, it's not sexy enough. Exactly, exactly. So I call myself Clint Iron. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What would you call yourself? I mean, Carl Pilkington, nothing wrong with that. It's quite a superhero's name. Well, it's when, Pilkington. When I was about seven, I wanted to be called Brett. Yes, yes. Why I, see why. I don't know. I just had a mate who was called Brett, and I thought that sounds good. It's different. Yeah, yeah. But then I'm quite happy with my name. Because Carl, Carl, I have to Carl say, Carl where does where does that come from, Carl? Because it's quite an it's quite a rare I told name. Told you, didn't I? My mum had a dream. I forget this. What your mother had a dream? She uh, she wasn't well. She had pneumonia or something, oh, right? Dear. And uh, she had this dream while she was pregnant. That's some doctor sort of, you know. She was going off to another place, she was gonna die or something, and this doctor went, I can sort this out, I can, uh, I can I know what I do here. And, uh, she remembers on his name badge, it said Carl. Really? So when she had me, she said, right. Call him Carl. Doctor. Doctor Carl. Calling yeah. Dr. Pilkington. Calling Dr. Pilkington. She hoped, I imagine, that you'd grow up to be like him in every way. I've Saving done all lives. Right. I've done alright for myself, I think. Sure. I'm yeah. alright. 
Yeah. This is what we were talking about, actually, weren't we? We were talking about the fact that, uh, you're quite proud of the fact that you, you, you've got no formal education, really. And yet you've pulled yourself up from the bootstraps. Yeah, well, well, well I know, I know people who've got results from that and don't do, don't do anything. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Go yeah. on the street. So yeah. I've used all my energy as I've got older rather than burning myself out as a kid. <laughs> right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. So I don't know if, if that's advice. Is that, should we advise that to, <laughs> to young kids out there? Don't take exams, don't work at school, just, uh, you know, move away from Manchester and get a job on XFM. <laughs> They'll employ anyone. Yeah, you get an hour's lunch break, you're away by quarter to six. You need, and, uh, you need no qualifications and to you work for you XFM. Because you don't have to think for yourself, because your boss tells you what to do, you can have some time off to go mm. shopping mm. for Hobbs and yeah. shower units. It's, it's alright, it's a good boss. Yeah, I know. He'll let me have ne next Saturday off. He knows how tired I am. You've had, how many Saturdays has he had off? He's going away again. I mean, he's had two holidays. He gets 26 holidays, 20 day, six days a year. Mm. 26 days a year. It's unbelievable. Yeah, he, he was sick because he put on wet trousers. Yeah. And now you're going down to Hastings. Are you leaving early? Because you left early last time, didn't you? No, 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 I wouldn't do that again. Now, what are you going to Hastings for? Just having a break. Listen, yeah. though, we were talking about depressing news. <laughs> right? And with that kid and what have you. Yeah. You see that thing in the week, there was, there was three bits of depressing news, yeah. right? There was one, an old woman who swallowed a fork. <laughs> <laughs> an old woman who swallowed a fork? Yeah, did you see She's that? dead, the dork. She's an old woman swallowed a fork, so what did she, she swallowed a spoon? What did she, yeah, 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 she swallowed a spoon to, yeah, when she swallowed a spoon. Yeah. What's Go her on. name? She, uh, swallowed a cockroach. Right. Sorry, whoa, 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 is this, is this the old rhyme Sorry, now, is this or... a rhyme that you've got slightly wrong? No, 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 you've no, changed, no, no, you've changed like dog that. for fork. <laughs> this is the truth, is it? This is yeah. what you read? Oh, right. no, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Never confuse the two. <laughs> this is what you read on a spurious website, so or that, that, some mentalist no, emailed Sorry, just, just before you move on from that, there was an old woman, there was an old woman who swallowed a cockroach. Yeah. And to, in order to get the cockroach out, she what, she swallowed a fork? It doesn't rhyme, but it's good. She, um, she tried to get it out. Uh, With a fork. She went, well, I forgot. She, I'm thinking she's in a kitchen. Yeah. That'll do. She grabs that, she tries to get it out, and she lets go of it. And, and it goes, swallows a fork. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was in the paper. The terrible thing, thing was, it was a gardening fork. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was awful, you know. What, what, or is that, or is that stupid? That'd be stupid if it was a gardening fork, wouldn't it? I'll tell you what annoys me, though, with things like that. Me? In the paper, it was, well, you do, and everyone knows that. <laughs> <laughs> you t honestly, no. Right? You, you do me adding. People, uh, the way people say it must be great working with him. Must be brilliant. <laughs> no, it's not. That. It's a nightmare. Go it on, is a nightmare. Get on with, get on with it. Go on with I can't be bothered call. now. Let, let's just close some. Carl, Carl, because I, you know, I've won it. I'm yeah. interested. I'm interested. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. I am. But come back after this. No, 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 no. Let me fin finish the story. Come on. Long links. Uh, I'll, I'll <laughs> tell you another bit. <laughs> I'm getting annoyed. <laughs> I'm getting so angry. <laughs> All right. I the player I got up with. And lucky man, that's for Carl, who is a lucky man. Two hours every Saturday, yeah? Just a little bit of chat and laughter. Some great records. All right? What are you going to Hastings for? Just to chill out? Yeah. What are you going to do? Just chill out. <laughs> <laughs> what specifically is in Hastings that's of interest to you? They having another battle? Nothing, it's just cheap, isn't it? If you can get a B and B for about forty quid. Sure. The weather's good, so well, let's all go. Why not? <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> Do you want Ricky to come down with you? No. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Now, you were going to tell us something before we started winding you up. Um, what were we talking about? Uh, we were talking about the old man who was mistaken <laughs> for a small you? child. It was actually, yeah, the 70 year old who they thought was underage. Right, so we went, then we got on to, right, so the old woman, I was saying, ec, ec, yeah, yeah, she, uh, she ate a cockroach. Right. She ate a cockroach, yes, yeah. by mistake. How did she eat a cockroach? Why was there a was cockroach? Cleaning up? It was, she was cleaning up, it jumped in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> right. ah! so, so she immediately, the first thing she did was immediately grab a fork and plunge that down her throat. Yeah. And well, no, maybe not immediately. I mean, she tried other methods. She tried plastic spoons, her fingers, maybe washing it out, maybe going, <coughs> oh, I nearly swallowed the cockroach. Did she try that one? <coughs> oh, oh, ugh, how horrible. Right, so right. anyway, the, the fork went down. Yes. And it's got this picture in the paper of, like, the x-ray. And you can see, see the fork, just like going across like that. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's mild, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah, it, well, it was, it, where well, the fork was in her abdomen, was it? In uh, that yeah, x-ray? Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you sure she swallowed it? 
I'm sure she would just say that to the doctor. Like, how did he get in there? <laughs> Have you got a fork inside you? No, I know what you're getting yeah. at. Because I remember, uh, years ago, do you know, uh, Dr. Steele? Do on, I know uh, Dr. Steele? Yeah, on, uh, he does, is he sitting here? The one on, um, Richard and Judy. Right, what's he, a psychiatrist or the resident doctor? He just pops in and Is that the sort of like the suave sort of... He's not that, he's not that suave. I know what you mean, just, yeah, uh, just you. a normal doctor fella. Sure. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> yeah, this was like in the 90s, and, uh, <laughs> Richard and Judy said, we got the doctor in the A, uh, again today. Uh, we're looking at things that, you know, have been inside people. And there's this one, right, fella comes on, uh, with an x-ray. Yeah. It's sat on a pint glass. Well, it's sat on a pint well, glass? Yeah. That's what- He hadn't had it. Ah, oh, sat on a pint glass. I remember- I, I remember that story that, uh, was published, right, about the bloke, and this is the excuse he gave, um, to a doctor when he had to go and have something removed. It was, um, uh, a bottle of, sort of, HB sauce or something up his, uh, what word can we say in case well, Andrew's listening? You don't need to, you know, people know what you're saying. Okay. Right. Um, rectum. Is that right? Well, no, you didn't need to say it, but. Well, no, you might as well, it's a medical term, isn't it? Doctors anyway. say rectum, don't they? Anyway. Um, so, uh, the doctor got it out and the excuse, he said, he said uh, he'd been shopping, been to Safeways, he bought his shopping home, <laughs> and, uh, he popped the shopping on the, uh, <laughs> on the, uh, front step, um, and he realised he's locked himself out, so he started to shimmy up the drain pipe, um, but his trousers and pants fell down <laughs> while he was climbing, and he slipped and fell on the HP sauce <laughs> bottle, right? And, and that was the note thing, right? And the, the doctor had put at the bottom on his notes, this would be somewhat more believable if Safeway sold their HP sauce with condoms already attached. <laughs> 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 oh, oh well, God. Be bizarre, just Why did he put a condom on it? No idea. To use it again on his chips. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't just he, th he didn't just buy it to have a quick, you know. Yeah. He thought, well, I don't want to waste HB sauce. Sure. I mean, I I use it I use it uh, up the ass, then I put on the chips. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, <laughs> safe sauce. I always practice safe, safe sauce. sauce. <laughs> <laughs> always have safe sauce. Red hot chili peppers. Universally speaking on XFM 104.9, Steve. Um, I'm just gonna make every single one of our listeners shrug and kind of give a who cares <laughs> yeah. look by saying that <laughs> after the ads, songs of phrase answers. We've still got monkey news, haven't we? Oh, monkey news as well, yeah. Hello, you're supposed to say something that will keep people listening during the advert. Uh, should we bring back the- no, can't do Cheeky Figure of the Week. Play some ads. XFM. <laughs> Black Alicious and Deception on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Carl Pilkington, Steve Merchant. Well, we were talking just before the ads, um, about, uh, I think we were talking about objects being stuck up people's arses, okay? I think I that, was the, that was the link, wasn't it? was the link, Someone can just confirm it? that. It was, uh, it, it was, it was, uh, object, uh, ob <laughs> objet da, <laughs> uh, well, uh, objet das. RCS. Yes. Objet das. Objet das. Yeah. Which, like, well, maybe that's a new feature. Objet das. Objet das. I'm using objects you've stuck up your French brain. for stuff, stuffing <laughs> stuff up your arse. Yeah. But I remember when I, it's not really, it was just about objects <laughs> and odd things in odd places. I, um, used to work for a magazine when I lived in Bristol. And, uh, I remember the editor said to me once, he said, oh, we got a page to, we got half a page to fill. Do, do the usual. Phone up a hotel and ask <laughs> them what the weirdest object they've ever found left behind in a hotel room are. This was something they did every year, they just did a, a they would phone up the local hotel. And I found out, I can only remember two of them, but they have stuck in my mind. These were found, I think it was the, uh, Marriott Hotel in Bristol. Yeah. They were found by cleaners. Um, a chicken. A, a live a chicken? Hotel, yeah, a live chicken in a hotel room. And that was just left behind. And, um, a false leg. I mean, I don't know who Lou, I don't know who leaves behind a false leg. I mean, presumably you'd notice if you didn't have your false leg, because you'd be lying on the floor. But, um, but I just remember, well, yeah, I don't know where else you'd find those two objects, except perhaps Paul McCartney's farm. <laughs> <laughs> but I've always Ma thought, I've always thought Ma myself, who left behind a false leg? Ma maybe the chicken pecked it off. Yeah, and well, possibly. the person with it just, like, went and goes, so much different, I keep falling over. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. don't know why. And where's my chicken? Yeah. She probably called later and said, uh, did the cleaners find a uh, chicken and a false leg? I'll check. <laughs> yeah. We ha oh, have a lo we haven't hand had them handed in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know, we've got a, we got a lot of chickens and false legs left yeah. behind. What was it like? Yeah. It was just a wooden thing with a, with a foot. Has it got a foot on the end? Well, yeah. Yeah, we might have found it. It Do might you be yours. In pirate films, they always had the pirates would have the peg leg, which was just a piece of wood. There was no effort to make it look like yeah. a leg. I don't know why it didn't dawn on them then to make it look more like a leg. I mean, I don't know at what point. I'd like to quite, I quite like a big. I, Do you know I why? I'd really be that interested, but I'd be marginally interested to see the history of. It the was peg fashion leg. because they didn't wear long trousers then. 
So they all stopped at the knee. So right. why, why, why are you wearing long trousers? <laughs> no reason. <laughs> Let's have a look at your legs. Yeah. Oh, it's more embarrassing, you see, if yeah. you hide it. Yeah. It's like they had a hook. Yeah. Why, why didn't they have a glove? A hook is never a glove. It's not a practical enough thing. It is hook. if you're abseiling between two buildings <laughs> in a hurry, because then you can just use it straight down the wire. But a hook, I mean, a hook is such a grotesque thing. I mean, you... Cause right, really, don't have a go on. <laughs> but, I mean, there's no one except that weird guy who, who was up in North London who's still got a hook for a hand. Well, I, I, I think it's it is useful. It's good, well, no, it's good for carrying... Carry bags. Yeah, shopping, carrying shopping. Do you think that's the, that was the concern of pirates? Well, that... Them Tesco, I... Well, it's, I mean, they didn't have, like, animatronic sort of stuff then, did they? I know, but it's just so, I mean, you know, if, it's just not very flattering, is it? A hook? I mean, you know... James was at school with a kid who had lots of different things, like knife, fork, he could screw onto the end of it. That's brilliant. That, that is brilliant. <laughs> That's good. That's almost as good as having a hand. Mm. Yeah. yeah. For, 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 for the canteen. But at school, you'd be the coolest kid in school, surely. Mm, bit more frightening in the swimming pool. I or in a bouncy you... castle. Yeah. But yeah, for, for chopping up a bit of, for chopping up a bit I of I imagine pork. him being banned from the bouncy castle. <laughs> <laughs> at the fate. You can't let him on. Oi, hooky, get on. You're not welcome on here. <laughs> like to apologise for some of the things said in today's show. But what happened when he started asking girls out and stuff? Well, I imagine he spent a lot of time with his hands behind his back. Oh, God. With a sore spot on him one. <laughs> probably. That's and so uh, And I can get it out with this one. Yeah. <laughs> Doctor said, that's handy. There's a tailor in Ward 2 yeah. that's got a shopping we bag up his ass. Just pop it up there, pull it out. Shopping intact. Done. Anyway. Uh, Hastings soon. To Rockbusters. It's going to Hastings in ten minutes, isn't ya? Can't wait, can't He's wait. He's looking forward to it. Lovely day. Lovely town. Nice little trip. Chill out, come back refreshed. Monday. Ah, let's do some work. <laughs> Ooh, you'll what, sleep tonight. What does the boss want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> He's done you there, Carl. I was letting it lie. And he comes back with that after we were getting on. So, who's the winner? Answers. <laughs> well, let's do what's good the answers first. <laughs> Right, well, this was, uh, this is how it sounded. No, it's not rock, so I'm calling it rock, but it's just because no I, 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 no I, no I, they're all interchangeable at the moment. Alright, Paul McCartney, Cheeky Girls, Sugar Babes, Space and Beatles. Okay. Right? Brilliant. You've really, I mean, if you're not interested in it, Carl, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, mate. Um, anyway, we're going to give the uh, prizes, which were pretty good this week, to uh, <laughs> James Waters from Colchester. Well done to him, he's got them pretty much right. Where's Dickie Anderson? Not heard from Dickie Anders for a long, long because time. Because I wanted to, I, I, if there's one show I'd want him to hear, it's this one. Because mm. we've pulled out some of the stops now, haven't we? He's mm. excited because he's going away, so he's putting an extra bit of, ah! Come on, let's play a record. Let's play a tune, then let's come back with Monkey News. Can we have some Monkey News oh, to end with? Oh, yeah, oh, he's oh, excited. oh, 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 placebo in this picture on XFM 104.9. Eight minutes to go, let's make it a good eight minutes, and then we can all chill out. Yeah? Enjoy the rest <laughs> of the weekend. Play the jingle. Uh, oh, chimpanzee that, monkey news. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. A particularly aggressive jingle this week. Wow. Yeah, looking forward to this monkey news. <laughs> Carl. Right. Come on. So, what's the name? What? We've done... <laughs> Sorry, what, what, what? Brilliant. We've done, uh, we've done a lot of monkeys who, like, Got involved in crime and stuff. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Right. We had uh, the one on the train station, yep. Nick in a bag. Yeah. We had the one who went Don't into a that bank. One. Who cares? Went into a <laughs> bank <laughs> and walked out with the money and stuff. Yes. Right. Didn't happen either. Next. Uh, <laughs> but the thing is, you never sort of found out what happened to them if they sort of got worse, got more involved into oh, crime. Oh, this is news update. <laughs> that would uh, be amazing. Brilliant. What they found out in India is, yeah, they've got a prison. It's okay. just for monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you mean wild animals? You mean a they, zoo? Yeah, yeah, a zoo or a kennel or no. something that where they've they've it's been mm. uh, gone mental or no, something. No, it's a prison. It's yeah, a prison. Is it, is it, does it have fraud cases? It's got it's I mean, mainly, I, I, mainly sort of animals that are attacked things. And it's mainly violence, I bet. That's my that and uh, that and theft. Say it again. Stuff. Theft. <laughs> Say it again. Theft. Say it again. Robin. No, let's go back to the, 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 that word. We're going to keep doing it. You've got, we've got Robin. six minutes. You're going to say the word right before you go to Hastings. Well, do you say it? No, well, you no, because then you know how to say it. Well, all right, Robin then. It's been caught Robin. Say it again, though. So Who's anyway. Robin? Who's Robin? So, uh, they've got this prison. <laughs> right. This is extraordinary. <laughs> say it again. No, you're not going to say it? No, go on then. So they got a prison for them, right? And, uh, there's eleven of them in there, eleven monkeys. Right. 
that are in there for life. Because <laughs> that's... The, 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 I think there's one just got out on parole, right? No right. time off but of the there's bag, eleven. Yeah? There's eleven. I'll give you the bit of paper, because I thought this was... <laughs> Wait, now, what, th you thought it was a bit weird. Now, Carl, what, uh, what are they in there for, then? Because, I mean, they're in there for life, so I'm assuming Robin, it's murder, Robin, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Premeditated murder? <laughs> They're not, they're not crime bosses, are they? They're not, not are they the, are they the, prostitution uh, and gambling. Are you sure they're not they're just the pawns and the, and the head sort of like orangutans up a tree going, remember, you don't know me. You're on your own. <laughs> 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 you just might go down, you're all yeah. coming with me. You take some of your gorillas down there and sort him out. Oh, the great banana robbery. <laughs> I wonder, if, I wonder if they get them. <laughs> right, go on then. Okay, let me see. Now, where, I don't know what source this is, as ever. <laughs> is it just, is it just a ba the back of a fag bag it found in a toilet? Well, no, I mean, someone's clearly... If, if this is nonsense, then someone's clearly gone to a lot of effort because it does open with the headline, Parole Unlikely for Inmates of Monkey Prison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Officials <laughs> say 11 inmates at India's only monkey jail. Officials? Now, what kind of people <laughs> work <laughs> at a monkey jail? <laughs> where do you work? Uh... Um, oh. it says officials say 11 inmates at India's only monkey jail are unlikely to ever be released. Uh, the prison in Patilia houses monkeys apprehended by game wardens in Punjab state for thieving and attacking people. Uh, the Daily, uh, the Daily Telegraph reports how the monkeys at the prison in Montebello, blah, 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 snarl and glare at visitors from their heavily barred cages. Two monkeys were released a year ago after exhibiting good behaviour for 18 months in the jail. They have remained out of trouble. Prison can work, that's good. So... So All basically, eleven monkeys. They were aggressive wild animals that were taken away from the public for their own good. I'm robbing or not. <laughs> <laughs> Wildlife officials believe part of the problem has been caused by thieves training monkeys to help them. Lorry drivers training monkeys as guards for vehicles and itinerant entertainers oh, using so ill treated annoying. monkeys as and part it's of the, their act. It's the monkey that takes the rap. It's a shame that isn't that it? is awful. They didn't know what they were doing, did they? Oh, so there you go. What do you think of that, though, Carl? What would you, what would, if you, if you could visit them, like Lord Longford, or something, what would you, what would you say to them? You go there and they, you, they, you get a visit a week or summer, you know. So can you get us a video? <laughs> 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 right. Do they get uh, conjugal rights? Do you reckon? You wouldn't be interested in that, though, would you? What's <laughs> they get? What? <laughs> would you be happy to give them their conjugal rights? Yeah, would you? Fair enough. All right. Off to Hastings. <laughs> Off you See go. You later. <laughs>